Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Wanderer's Haven. Today we are doing another exciting We Get to Play episode, where today we are playing an oldie but a goodie, Traveler, the Mongoose uh, uh, Publishing. Uh, so Jerry's doing a dance. It threw me off my rhythm there for a second. The Mongoose Publishing second edition version of the game. Uh, Traveler is a game that has a long and storied history going back all the way to the beginning of tabletop role-playing games as we know it. So it's awesome that we're going to sit down and play this right now. Um, I'm Kevin. I'll be your host and the referee today. Uh, we're going to throw some fisticuffs like American Gladiators, apparently. But uh, uh, yes, today we're playing Traveler, as I mentioned. I've got four great players with me here, most of which have not played Traveler. Uh, one of which is a little bit of an expert at Traveler. He's a ringer, but we'll get into that in a minute. Um, hey. But yes, uh, we're going to be here for the next couple of hours playing this. And uh, if you want to know more about Traveler, you can head on over to mongoosepub.uk, I think is what it is. I probably should have memorized that, but it's all good. Let's uh, go ahead. Let's meet who's playing today. We're going to have everybody go around to say who you are, where you can be found real quick at a link, and then also your character, maybe a little bit of a background sentence or two if you want. Let's start with... Our good friend, ladies first. Hi, Deb. How are you today? Hello. I know you're so excited to be first. So I'm so excited. Um, I'm so excited to be here. I messaged Kev right away when this game was announced because I wanted to play Traveler. So this is great. Um, I'm on Instagram at dsweats. Check me out there. Um, I'm today playing Rahila. She is the medic on the ship, uh, and she is a human. Excellent, excellent. Glad to have you here. Yes, so make sure that it, link is on Instagram, not on Twitter, because Deb not is not Twitter. a guy in Texas. So Yeah, Twitter, uh, D. Sweats is a guy from <laughs> Texas. That's not that's me. Right. That's right. Also, Thanks, I'm here Deb. on Wednesdays, too. So That's true. East in, our, in East Terra. Yes, awesome. Thanks, Deb, for being here. It's going to be a lot of fun. So Let's move on over to Sid. I'm not sure where the layout is on the screen. I might be jumping all over the place. Sorry about that. But let's head on over to Sid. How you doing there, buddy? Good to have you back. We just played yesterday, man. Welcome back to the stream. Yeah. Always good to be back. Always great to be here. Always great to play uh, in a we get to play. Um, Sid, you can find me on the socials at underscore Sundance Sid. And today I'll be playing uh, Agent Hito, a human spy guy. Nice. Uh, and I'm just, yeah, uh, just, just a, a spoiler alert. I'm the expert for Traveler. So, you know. I, I, I know, oh I know, yeah, you know it all. You're the ringer I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm definitely nice. the ringer. Awesome. Right. Cool. Cool. All right. In that case, you're running. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Cool. Thanks, Sid. Thanks for being here, buddy. It's always good to have you. We'll head on over to a good buddy of mine. First time, I believe, streaming in general, but definitely his first time on Wanderers Haven. My good buddy Nate. How you doing, Nate? Hi, Kevin. Thanks a lot for inviting me to Traveler, my probably second favorite RPG been playing uh maybe not as long as sid i don't know we'll have to compare notes later <laughs> but uh yeah glad to be here you can find me instagram dj underscore dungeon master and today i'm playing uh anatoly the proud cook with the love of guns excellent i love it i love it cool thanks for joining us nate this is uh going to be a real treasure playing this with you so all right, let's wrap everybody up with Jeremy. You know him, you love him. He's here on the channel all the time because he kind of put this whole beast together. So, hey, Jeremy, what's up, man? Yeah, I've, I feel like I've started to live here more and more. Uh, <laughs> right. I'm Jeremy. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything, but I am the expert traveler player here. I have my D20s already. <laughs> I have some D4s just in case. <laughs> and you can find me on most social platforms at WH Pubs or Wanderers Haven. Uh, I am playing Thurzang. Is that how we're going with it? Hey, it's your character, yeah. Yeah, Thurzang, the Vargir or Wolf Fellow, which I'm oh, yeah. looking forward to. Uh, as soon as you threw up the pregents, I was just all like, dog, yes. <laughs> right. I'm going to go be a dog for a day. Oh, yeah. I knew you'd love that. <laughs> Very cool. And yes, like I said, I am Kevin. I will be the referee, which is this uh, game's terminology for the Game Master. And I can be found online at the socials at Kevran Games. Uh, while they're playing these four characters, I'm going to play everyone and everything else. So let's see how that goes for us. So uh, without any further ado, let's jump back into Traveler with a really cool adventure written by the one, the only, the inimitable Seth Skorkowski who's awesome. Uh, we're playing a game called Death Station today. What? 
Pirates. Let's do it. All right. So, Traveler, for those who might not know, is a game that takes place in a far potential future from the one that we live in now. In this time frame, humanity has reached out into the far stars. Space travel is quite regular, quite popular, but unlike typical science fiction fare that we see, Traveler is really well known for the fact that when you travel from one locale to another, you actually take the time between. You might actually be on a voyage on your ship from one planet to another that might take days, weeks, months. So it's a little bit less of our typical super glitzy, glammy sci-fi that we're used to, and a little bit more down, tried and true, if humanity were to actually reach out into the stars. So with that in mind, we're going to find one such vessel scouring out into the dark of space. It is a free trader vessel, which is a typical vessel that would be found moving around. Specifically, this vessel is known as the Orpheus. And the crew of the Orpheus is a small and tight-knit crew, some of which we will meet today in today's excursion. The Orpheus is a trading vessel, uh, being a free trader. So what they do is they are known to take jobs, moving from one locale to another, taking equipment and different types of cargo, wherever it needs to be taken. Specifically, the crew has just returned from a very successful uh, cargo trade route from one locale to another across the sector of the space here. And so we pick up, the ship is currently docked in a spaceport, as it were, of Euripides 3, which is not on any maps. We made it up. But the four of you specifically have traveled off the ship, and we find you right now in a small uh, space tavern, as it were, a cantina, one might say, where you all are awaiting to talk to the gentleman who hired you to do the trading back and forth because it would seem he has another job for you guys. Let's take a moment real quick. Let's, as we come down into view here, a different amalgamation of different races and species and folks milling about. Let's see exactly who is sitting at our table. The first of which we will notice is a character who is tall, broad-shouldered, blonde hair. This character's name is Anatoly. So Nate, please tell us a little bit about your character, what he looks like, what we see when Anatoly comes into view, please. Well, Anatoly has a, is very proud of his lineage, which he can trace back for thousands of years, uh, all the way to Terra uh, and to the uh, to the area formerly known as the as Russia. Uh, he's so he has very strong Slavic features. Uh, his full name is Anatoly Grigorovich Kalishnikov. He. Um, has uh, a bit of technology installed in his head where he can slot a wafer into the jack that holds certain different skills. And while he only has uh, a couple of wafer jacks, one that he does have is cooking. So he's uh, well valued on this crew for for his uh, his cuisine and he often will be seen using his combat knives in the kitchen. Um, and he is uh, very proud of of, uh, of himself, probably a little bit more than he needs to be. Uh, boisterous at times, yet he's also very gregarious. He wants to share uh, his love of food. And with this crew that he's come to uh, love his family, he's very protective of. And when they do get in a into a, a tight fix. He's he's there with the firepower when needed. Absolutely. Well, great. Sitting next to him is another member of the crew, uh, individual that we will get to know well today as well. Uh, she looks a bit different than Anatoly, uh, has a bit of a unique uh, coloration to her hair, which Deb will now get into as we see Rahila as she sits next to Anatoly. Uh, she is quite a bit shorter than Anatoly as well. So you can definitely see their height difference already as they're sitting around this table. And uh, when they stand up, it is even more apparent that she is quite short. So she's about five foot one, five foot two. Um, she has bright pink hair that uh, she keeps up out of the way in two buns on the top of her head. 
Um, and the other striking thing about her is that she has heterochromia, so she has two different colored eyes. One is blue and one is green. Very cool, very cool, yes. And she sits there, she has a small case sitting on the ground next to her, which has a very distinct red plus sign on the front of it that we will come to know, I'm sure, during our excursion today. On the other side of the table, who is another gentleman who actually, as he drinks his drink, is looking about the room a bit uh, trepidatiously, a bit cautiously. Uh, Sid, tell us a little bit about Hito as he sits there and looks around the room taking stock. Uh, <clears throat> well, so yeah, feet up on the table, looks like, you know, he's carefree and uh, not paying attention, but just drinking in the the, the atmosphere and the surroundings, you know, to, to drop the guard of anyone that may be looking on to the group. Uh, all black, uh, in, an all, in an all black outfit with, you know, uh, dark purple accents and uh, uh, dread, uh, dread, uh, tied to the back with a sky that end in sky blue dye dyed sky blue at the end uh just they're looking around he does not have heterochromia so both of his eyes are you know uh are brown <laughs> like a honey a brown honey goldish color coloration and then like i said just there pretending like he's not paying attention but he's paying attention Oh, the yes, lone absolutely. wolf that's found his pack that's still a lone wolf uh, just <laughs> yes. hanging out and uh he, he has a helmet that he uh periodically just puts on and off you know uh star lord-esque uh <laughs> type okay. helmet that he just presses the button and it comes up then it goes back and it comes up like i said just to drop the guard of anybody that's uh that may be looking upon the group very cool yes absolutely uh these three humans are joined by the fourth member of their group who enters up with another round of drinks this character is distinct from the rest of the crew because he is a varger one of the specific races to traveler varger are tall bipedal canine folks so they have a typical uh maybe looking like huskies like wolves that sort of thing type of look and as he approaches we're gonna th see thurzang for the first time tell us a little bit about him jeremy all right so as uh thurzang carries this uh tray of drinks back to his friends he's looking around uh, make sure that his his rifle is still under the table where he put it uh, his tail starts wagging slightly and bumps somebody's drink as the fur kind of goes into the drink and splashes it about. So, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'll get you another one. Uh, and he goes and sits down. Um, but the people are already, like, drinking from the top of the drink that he smushed. So, obviously, they didn't care too much about his hair being in it. Uh, so he sits down, uh, looks at everyone, and pulls out a small um, data pad and begins, like, messing around with it because... The last paycheck that we all earned, he spent a really ridiculous amount of that to get his hair dyed with multi-chromatic nanites that he can like shift with this pad as like the so right now his hair is green, but then he shifts it around and kind of flicks to yellow, flicks to like a dark blue, and he's like, No, no, I'm not happy with any of these. And so finally he flicks it to a purple and it's not quite the pink purple that that uh, Ra 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 Rahela's is, <laughs> but um, it's pretty close. And he just like his tongue kind of sticks out for a moment, and <laughs> <laughs> his tail wags, and he puts it away and takes a drink of his beer. Absolutely, space ale all the way for sure. So as the four of them sit here enjoying their time off the ship, uh, again the the voyage here has been sit 
pretty realistic. You guys come to this spaceport from time to time. It's not anything out of the ordinary to be here. So it's without any sort of surprise that you notice your patron as he begins to shuffle his way into the room. And Dogly Hosh is what is called a Bwop. They are short, lizard-type folks with an elongated face. His features are more akin to an anoli lizard or maybe even an iguana than more of a human-type shape. He shuffles in on small little stubby legs. He has a cloak on that is an off brown type color the hood is up he has several rings upon both of his hands and as he approaches ah oh, hello my friends it is so good to see you here i am very pleased with the way that you have handled our last business accusation um who are you in perhaps need of some more money perhaps i've got a great job for you sorry can you repeat his name his name is Dogly Hosh, D-A-L-G-L-E-E -E is his first name, H-A-H-S-H. -H -H, Perfect, thank you. Yes, indeed. Oh, Dogly, good to see you. Um, Yeah, I, I might have overspent that last check, so if you've got everything set up for another, I mean, I'm down. What do you, what do you all think? I could always use more, yeah. I don't think you overspent either because it looks great. Very oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it, it does look rather impressive. Usually you Varger look rather gaudy, but I appreciate what you're doing here. I was hoping to see your Captain Erica. She is quite a looker, you know, and she and I get along pretty well. No, oh, she is on the ship? Okay, that is all right. All right, here's what we will do. I will tell you, because I trust you, friends. We have a bit of a uh, relationship. I will I will explain to you, and then you can go and tell her what I want to perhaps hire you for. So, here is the job. As you all know, one of my employers on the up and up is, of course, Lysani Laboratories. They do much pharmaceutical research and testing in different laboratory vessels across the sector. Well, one of these vessels has actually gone quiet. They have lost all radio contact. And you know what? My b business employers, he looks around the room. My business employers want to make sure that, uh, you know, nothing has befallen their investments, you know. So I told them I had the perfect crew who would be very, very cautious, very, very quiet, very discreet, who would go in and find out exactly what is happening, you know. But uh, I rely uh, on you. Can I count on you? What? What? Okay, so what job were you thinking for us then? <sighs> Well, yeah, I thought that was implied, but if you want to oh. think otherwise... Oh, you, uh... we're the discreet ones. Okay. Yeah, of course, you know. You, you I did mean, that I think we can, we can kind of do discreet, right? Well, I don't know. It's your big fellow here, he says, pointing to Anatoly. He made the big mess last time. He threw some chili on the man's face. The guy still has burns and stuff. It's crazy. Well, well, he that was right. waste chili, I tell you. Uh, absolutely. That chili was delicious. Yeah. I keep Thurzog pretty pretty stocked up on kibble. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think that guy was a little offended that I licked it off his face. <laughs> oh, that was a bit uh, a bit too familiar, I think. But what do you say, quiet one over there in your all black garb? But you always looking so serious all the time. Oh, jeez, Hito, I didn't even realize you were here. Oh, he sneaks up on everyone, even my Aslan gods. And he points in in different corners of the room. There are these very tall bipedal Leonine folk uh, known as the Aslan. They are another race that's specific to Traveler. They are tall, muscular, very uh, feline features, longer hair, things of this nature. He has several bodyguards that are around the room. You've seen these bodyguards uh, beat some people up before, so you know that these guys can handle themselves. Um, but are you giving my Aslan guards a bit of a, uh, you know, they, uh, they are, they're, their hair is standing on it, you know? That's the point. Oh. If they're not, you know, they're not on edge, what kind of bodyguards are they? Just raise an eyebrow. You know, that, that was so serious, I got a chill up my spine, oh my goodness. So, are you in for the job, or do you want me to go find someone else who wants to make uh, 20,000 chits? Huh? 20,000? We like know the captain start. is always looking to make the payment on the ship. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll take it. And how far away is this station? Well, it is just a short little jump. It probably would take you two or three days to get there. I mean, nothing too extraneous for your vessel, I think. I can top you off on the gas as well, and, you know, if you are successful in bringing me back the information about what has happened there, I can go ahead and actually provide you with a waiver for some uh, free eats here at the casino when you come back, you know. What about, VIP. uh, what about, uh, tokens for the gambling? Oh, well, I, I, you know what? I'm glad one of you is actually trying to barter me down. Usually, Erica makes a good deal about that. So, you know what? Uh, let me think Twice about that. <laughs> so, Nate, let's have you make the first roll of the game. Let's have you go ahead and make a carouse roll um, as you're trying to... Uh, actually, maybe this could be... Yeah, we'll do carouse roll or persuade. Um, what does make carouse. a carouse? I have carouse, we'll carouse. zero. So I won't be taking a penalty on the Okay. Roll. Cool. So you're going to roll, for those at home following along, you're going to roll 2d6 and add your score of your, we'll call this, you can either use your social or you can use your perhaps um, intellect if you're trying to just kind of wheel and deal and kind of manipulate him more, a little bit more mentally. So I'll, I'll go with intellect since I've got a bonus there. Okay. And I get a five. Oh, okay. So, he says, well, let me think about that. Oh, no, I do not like that plan. You know, I don't control the casino. I just am set up here. I can make sure you get all the free eats, a free room and board, you know, like we talked about already. Yeah. Could could you put that room with the grass, the, with the artificial turf on the ground? Could you set that aside for me? Like, <laughs> that, that one really, I like to rub on it. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes, I... I know that is your favorite. That is exactly why that is the one I was thinking. Yes. Oh, that would be totally. so great. It's always someone already has it every time we get here, I swear. Oh, yes, every time. Usually it is me. I did not. Oh, I should not have told you that. Oh. Well, you know. I knew you for a grass rubber, too. Oh, it does feel good under the toesies, under a long joy voyage on the traveling. You get off the plane. That's the best way to relieve the stress. You make balls with your feet. Oh, Fists yeah, exactly. Like, like you're making biscuits, like one of the Aslan. Oh, yes. <sighs> oh, yes. Hey, what do I, we are off topic here. We are talking oh, business, okay? Do not distract me. So are we in agreement then? Are you speaking for your Captain Erica behalf? In information is all you're looking for? Well, we want to know exactly what has happened there. I want you to go there. I want you to look around, to come back, tell me what has happened, why they do not have the radio contact. Tell me exactly what it is, why they have gone quiet in this past week. All right. Uh, we get any bonuses for bringing back anything extra? What do you mean extra? Like what? Whatever, whatever we find. You want information. What if we bring back someone, you know, that's been snooping around? Asking too many questions. I don't know. I'm just messing. I'm asking you. Oh, like oh, rabble rousers. Rabble rousers. Yeah. Well, I do not think anyone is sneaking around, but maybe, uh, you know what? Uh, we can discuss that when you return. I am, I'm happy to give you a bonus. You have done good jobs for me in the past, you know. Eh, works for me. Okay. I'll, uh, Make kind of a, a yes gesture with my head. I've had uh, Erica on the comm link and open oh. link the whole time, so so she could hear what was going on. Excellent. And uh, the, the captain thinks this is a good deal. Oh, I did not know she was here. Where is that lovely lass hiding? Where is she at? The... Unfortunately, she couldn't be here in person uh, to oh. meet you, uh, Dogly, uh, given the last time you two were together and. Had a little too much vodka. Oh, yes, yes. Your captain made a pass at me. It was very embarrassing for her. That is okay, though. Um, all right, then here is the location. He's going to give you all some coordinates uh, jacked directly into your data pad device that you have. Uh, he'll give these uh, directions, yeah, right to you, Anatoly, so you type them in. And, yeah, it is, in fact, it's a, a sector. It shows the, the little sector map of the, of the star area here. And, yeah, it's basically just one. Um, the maps here are kind 
kind of based around hexes. So it's basically one hex over. Again, it's probably a day, maybe two at most journey. Wouldn't be too much gas for you guys. It's pretty simple back and forth. It's probably you guys got picked because of the proximity, realistically. So shouldn't be too bad. Not, not for our skill. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sure that plays into it for sure, but... <laughs> So you guys return to the Orpheus. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to discuss about the plan on the way, or you guys just go straight back? Who's got good, like, computer skills? If we're going to get there and maybe you know, take some kind of data dump from the central I computer. I do. Okay. I keep... What else might we need? I mean, it's just a fly by and see, or we're expected to board, or... I guess we would have to board. So out of curiosity, what is a good score compared to not a good score? Sure. So you're going to have, if you look at all your skills, mm -hmm. you're going to have, some of them will have no ranking at all. So that, that'll be just be, when you take that, you take a penalty to rolling that because you're not really expertised in that. You're not really skilled in that. And they'll range anywhere from a zero, which is you have basic common knowledge. Uh, for example, someone here in the real world, if they're just a regular person who has a driver's license, they would have a zero drive. Okay. Um, if you are more skilled, it goes up one to two, uh, even higher numbers, but realistically one or two is going to be the most you're going to see in something at the level you guys are playing at today. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, so something good would be like a one or a two. Yeah. Awesome, thanks. Are there any uh, goods we need to get to, for this kind of thing that's not already on the ship? <laughs> Did you get think... any touch-up dye if uh, we're gone <laughs> oh. for a while? Yeah, they gave me like one tube for when this grows out, but after that, it's uh, it was like on a special, so it's like I gotta, yeah. Apparently, these don't just, like, move down with your hair like the more expensive brands. I can't believe this stuff is that expensive. Yeah, it is. Can you turn it off? Oh, yeah. And I'll, <laughs> I'll pull out that pad and turn it off, and my hair just goes back to being this, like, yeah. uh, kind of gray salt and pepper. Definitely. And then I'll put well, it back to purple. Some... <laughs> I've got some extra, too, in case we need to, you know, swap if it if it takes a while. So. Oh, I mean, if you want to use some of this, you're always welcome to, you I know. I mean, always, yeah. Okay, you look great. You'll, it'll be in my uh, my cubby on the ship. Cool. You know where it's at. Yeah. So you guys, yes, you guys return to the ship, and uh, as you make your way up to the bridge and you fill in with the last little bit of information that she might not have gleaned while listening over the comm to Captain Erica, she is a human. She has short, cropped black hair and that typical 1930s-style bob. It's at the chin length with the, the bangs. Uh, she's a no-nonsense kind of lady, but she has really earned your trust and your favor over the years. She is a friend, true and true to all of you, being like a family to her as part of her crew. Um, she also pilots the ship for sake of ease for our story today and uh yeah so you guys make your way out and we are going to kind of cut back into where we first kind of saw that ship at the beginning of today's session cutting through the black of space um again in traveler typically you would play out this time of the traveling for two days time but we're playing a one shot so we're going to get right to the meat and bones of it so we are going to find the ship making its way into that secondary sector and as you do you see ahead of you that there is a large structure floating in the space it is a circular uh, built laboratory station that actually has a slow and constant rotation to it those of you who have been on spacecraft many a time before would know that that rotation is to facilitate artificial gravity. So the fact that that's still in place lets you know it's nothing super drastic that's happened to the uh, laboratory ship because it's still powered on. And uh, as you all are approaching, uh, I'd like all of you to please make a uh, perception roll, which will fall under specifically... Um, it's all kind of all one skill. It's going to be, we're going to call it recon, which is kind of what you do to kind of determine things and see what's going on. Um, and you would use your, excuse me, your uh, intellect score again for this to kind of see what you see. So your recon skill, if you have any points there, and then your uh, intellect 
if you have any, uh, your your DM or your dice modifier, you'll see is a number off to the side of your score. You would add that as well. Onto your 2d6. That's okay. all of us, right? <clears throat> yeah, everybody can roll it, yeah. And just to verify, so you roll your 2d6, add them together, and then do your modifier. And if you do not have a modifier in either of them, it's a minus two, right? Yeah, that'll okay. be at a, at a penalty, yeah. So you'll have a minus two to your roll, yes? You are correct. So if so, say I have one in recon and then one for my intellect, my my dice modifier. You add two to it, or you just add one. You would add the modifiers if you have modifiers for each. You can add them all in together. Okay. I rolled a seven. Seven. Six. Okay. I got a six. I also seven. Six. I also got a six. Six. And I'm sorry, Anatole, what'd you get? A uh, seven seven okay as you guys are approaching the uh laboratory ship you don't notice anything out of the ordinary it looks like it again it's spinning on its rotation on its axis you can see that in the center of the laboratory ship there is a uh a piloting pinnace which is basically like a uh, a smaller ship that can be detached if necessary. It has all the main controls and it's docked in the center, the typical spot where you would dock to uh, enter into the vessel. So uh, you would maybe have to find a different way to dock if you did want to board it. But uh, what do you guys wish to do as you come closer? Uh, I'm gonna... Yeah, maybe I'm pilot gonna... around it just to see if there's any external damage to the communications array or any other obvious. Sure, okay. Um, Captain Erica is going to pilot around. You guys make a slow loop around the exterior of the science ship, uh, the laboratory ship, trying to get an idea of what's going on. And as you are flying around, let's have everybody once again make another recon roll. And I'll give you all a plus two because you guys are actually actively trying to search out and work together and use your ship scanners and things like that to make sure that you guys are not going to be caught unawares. That's a five. Ooh, a nice. ten. Ten, okay. Also ten. Ten. Eleven. Oh, okay. So everyone except for <laughs> Thurzang are going to see that as you are approaching around to the backside of the laboratory ship near the spinning axis down towards the uh, lower section of the ship you see that there is some debris that is floating out in space and specifically down here what you see is that looks to be a entryway hatch of some sort uh, typically would be used by people in a docking capacity uh, is where the debris is all at. There are glass shards and metal bits that are all twisted and distorted floating in space and you see that there is a person floating in space amongst this debris. They are only wearing pants and this gentleman is got very deep and uh, pretty wicked looking lacerations all over his back. There's a couple of smudges of maybe grease or oil are splashed across his features as well and he floats lifelessly in space near the vessel. I think we got the information we need and we'll jump back and report. <laughs> Sounds good. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, uh, all right. So we're not we're not going in. We're not going to go inside. Well, I mean, they just right. wanted to know why, and obviously because the guy's dead. I mean, just Pro put two and two together, right? Mystery solved. <laughs> I mean, I agree, but what if he's what, uh, what killed him? Oh, and is what that... if there are more people uh, that need help? I sh we should go help them. Yeah, that makes sense. Can we get the body on board so our doctor can, you know, do a, a, a no? A I'm pretty sure it's dead. Uh, you you can uh, yeah. Captain Erica flies you guys down a little bit closer to the body. There is a little arm that comes out of the front of your your vessel. It's used for like uh, salvaging uh, pieces of debris or, or loading the ship sometimes. And she extends it out, and this device kind of closes around the guy and slowly brings him back in and it gets enclosed into a section of the ship and within the ship down near your guys' cargo hold there is in fact where this arm would deposit his lifeless body 
and I think right at that's d- done being done, uh, Rafila, uh, Rahila, excuse me, you come down into the bay right up upon the, the body to see what's going on with it. Does anybody else accompany her, or is it just her doing this? I am. I'll, I'll accompany. I'll, I'll accompany her, and, well, it, it takes a little time, so maybe I won't accompany her. I'm going to don my combat armor. Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, what are you doing Thursday? No, actually, I'm, I'm keeping an eye out just to make sure, because, I mean, if something exterior or even interior, uh, you know, is a threat and they lock on weapons or whatever, I just want to make sure that there are people on the bridge to take care of that. So I'll, I'll stay absolutely. here and keep an eye out. Okay, absolutely, absolutely. So in the cargo hold, as you approach the body, Rahila, you're going to see, the, yeah, as I mentioned, the man, he's been floating in space for a little bit of time, you would tell. Just an initial glance, this didn't just happen. You can see that there's the markings around his skin and his flesh, that cold uh, that comes from being in space for too long. Uh, some of his blood is crystallized along the edges of the cuts and things like this. Um, but yeah, if you want some more information, you can definitely try to investigate further and see any information if you'd like. Definitely. Okay, let's do a uh, sciences roll with, um, because you're a a doctor, I guess you could say. Um, I will give you a boon on this. Now, what you'll do is when you roll a boon, you're going to roll instead of 2d6, you're going to roll 3d6 and take the best of the two dice as your score to add to your uh, science roll. Science and uh, your education would be what you would add on top of that as well for your ability. All right, that is a 14. Oh, wow, okay. Nice, very nice, very nice. So, yeah, you start, uh, you have different equipment, uh, you know, scalpels and different um, readouts and, uh, you know, different types of apparatuses to determine exactly what happened with this guy. So you give him the full one over, and it's going to take you... About 30 minutes to do this. So you do the full run out. And what you can determine is that this gentleman specifically, uh, he did die in space because the way some of the blood was on the back of it, it was flowing out of his wounds. You can see that his wounds were caused mainly from the back. The the cuts, very small abrasions that he has on his face and chest uh, that are mixed in with the grease are because something exploded and ejected him into space, which you're guessing would probably be what caused the explosion and the debris outside of the, the laboratory vessel as well. Uh, but the deep cuts on his back are definitely not caused by anybody uh, being cut up in the explosion. These definitely look like they are afflicted by something else. And with a roll that high, you can tell that the markings and the striations on the back would very distinctly match four fingers being dragged down somebody's back. All right. Um, Hito is with me. Uh, and Anatoly, did you make it down by this point as I'm finishing? Yeah, if you're, if you're spending 30 minutes, yeah, I was probably down at the 10 minutes. All right. Well, it looks like the smaller lacerations are from an explosion of some type that probably blew him out into space, but these wounds on his back were made by a person. Person? Person. And they're, how long are these wounds? They're anywhere from just a couple of short slashes that are four to five inches to a full length of all the way down his back as if someone were to grab onto his shoulder blades and rake all the way down towards his buttocks. Went on a date like that once. (laughs) It didn't end this badly. (laughs) Um... Yeah, so I'm. I close the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Snaps Ready. into place. <laughs> I and... asked the doctor then. So is is it could could just normal human hands cause this kind of damage? Would it have been human, or would it be like Aslan? Or oh yeah, you said four. Something else. Uh, it definitely looks, if it was human, it looks like it's definitely deeper. It looks like it would be somebody who would have to be extremely strong. Um, 
Aslan is a possibility because they are Leonine uh, alien type, but they typically fight with a dew claw that comes out of the center of their palm. So this wouldn't match this pattern of the claw marks. Could be something else. Is there a way to, to get like DNA from the wounds and find out oh. where they came from? What species? Um, yeah, we can. If you want to try to do that, Rahila, you can definitely try to do that. Uh, we'll just make another science roll. Um, I'll go ahead once again give you a boon because you're still using your uh, equipment. Plus, also with such a high roll that you made before, you'll get a bonus on that. So, what is translated into a boon as opposed to a plus, whatever? Great. I got an 11 on this one. Okay. Uh, you do take a blood sample out of the back of it. It's going to take a little bit of time for you to go back to the small lab that you have on the ship, um, but you can do that. And this whole process will take you about another 15 minutes. And as you run the samples and run the testing, you will find that the only blood that is in the this gentleman is two different types of human blood. So yes, the wounds were in fact caused by a human. I will share that information. Thurzang, from where you're at up in the cargo hold with Captain Erica, could you please make a recon test for me? Sure. I also wanted to uh, try and do... Uh, is this just a straight roll? Uh, yeah, it's going to be recon skill uh, plus your uh, intellect. Right. I was just... If, if you were giving any bonuses for reasons... Oh, uh, okay. That would make okay. my four better. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a four. Okay. Uh, you don't notice anything out of the ordinary, but suddenly Captain Erica goes, Whoa, did you see that? No. And she points towards the laboratory ship. She's specifically pointing at one of the windows that's around the outer ring of the gravitational spin, uh, right near one of the prongs that comes out and attaches it to the rest of the vessel. She goes, There was somebody looking at us. Looking right out of that hold there. So now this is guy. this is so there's the ring and this there's the um, the arm that comes out and attaches to the so if that was the case then the airlock inside that arm is probably closed. Is that what I'm gathering from what she just said? It could be um, specifically. Um, let's do this. Let's make a roll out of it. Um, I'll give you a boon on this because you've been on spaceships many a time. Let's have you go ahead and make a uh, education, um, piloting, maybe uh, engineering. What what kind of uh, you can make an argument for a type of skill if you think one would apply here. Out of curiosity, uh, so I have two electronics. I have computer and I have RMT ops. What are RMT ops? I should have checked that beforehand. I apologize. Under computer? Uh, yeah, so electronics, RMT ops. Sure. Um, I see that on my list here, too. Remote ops. Oh, gotcha. So is that like um, connecting to something like, say, the computer across the way to try and disengage the, the ship over there so that we could dock with the ring? Uh, you know, we can, if you roll high, we can have it applied that way. Yeah, okay. it could be for that. It could be for things like drones, remote controlled apparatuses, things of that nature. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's just where my mind is going. But right now, sure. whoop, going back to the present, um, so what skill are you using? I, I don't really see anything that's going to help me here. Unfortunately. Okay. Uh, okay, that's fine. I think it's a great idea to get the shuttle off the docking room. Right, but as far as figuring out whether or not that, if somebody's in that arm and trying to figure out if it's because they're essentially safe in there, I'm assuming that means that the airlock is closed, so everything past the shuttle is safe. Does that make sense? Whereas the shuttle yeah. has the blown out part and has no atmosphere, so someone's, if we went into it, we're going to have to wear a suit. Um I'm trying to figure out whether or not we can get into the ring and if there's somebody in there but what if they're wearing a suit or can breathe in space um I'm wearing a suit <laughs> right? right yeah I got you guys yeah, yeah I don't... you guys do have vac suits on board so you guys would be able to equip yourselves with vac suits if you needed to do a space walk or go into a, a, a zero gravity situation or zero atmosphere excuse me yeah situation um 
Captain Erica will also point out that um, this person that she saw, uh, that he was bald. He had a wild beard. Oh, uh, he so she was wearing that. a helmet. Okay. Yeah. Well, with my amazing boon that she gave me, thank you so much for that. And all of my fantastic skills, I got a five. Okay. Nice. My dice hate me today. Yeah, change the, uh, the, the tree. Change the tree. <laughs> That's it. That's it. So, yeah, you're not too sure. Uh, you're more worried about the uh, the coloration of your hair in this moment. Make sure you maybe you were touching it up a little bit. Right. I mean, earlier I dropped the pad. That's why I didn't notice what everyone else noticed. And right. there's like a little dent in the case. Didn't oh, crack no. the screen, which is good. But yeah. I'm really, uh, <laughs> my brain is elsewhere because oh, of yeah. that. So Captain Erica says, well, the a vessel like this, it could have multiple airlocks, especially if it's a laboratory vessel. It could stop, you know, if something were to explode or something were to maybe get uh, leaked, uh, you know, there's a loss of pressure from an experiment or something that they're doing. Uh, they could seal off different sections of it. So it could just be that section is sealed off because of the explosion. The rest of it should be fine, I would think. Well, do you think that for now we could try to remotely release the shuttle so that we can dock with the station? I just don't want to cause anyone harm if they're inside the arm. Yeah, that's a good call. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to send out one of the one of the bugs, you could. The bugs that you guys have are basically small little, we'll call them drones for okay. a way for us to understand with today's parlance, uh, parlance excuse me, that, um, yeah, they're small little things that you can remotely control to do little small minute jobs, things like push a button or open a door, but they're not going to do crazy stuff like you can't fight with them or you can't, you know, take over another ship with them or anything right. like that. But uh, you could use them for this purpose, sure. Okay. Yeah, so that'll be... I assume that'll take some time to launch that, send it over, do all yeah, that. So ahead. I don't want to yeah. eat up everyone roll. else's time. Yeah, go and roll a d6 for me real quick, please, Jeremy. Just one d6? One d6. That is a one. Okay, that, yeah, that'll take you about an hour to do all okay. that. Okay. Um, so cutting back to the other three, uh, kind of talking about the... Uh, the results, as it were. Uh, what are you three doing at this current moment? Uh, the three of us. Uh, so we're. I don't. Know, I'm, we're going back to the the lab, right? That was the last thing we were doing. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you're in the uh, Rahila's lab, a uh, small little lab that she has on the ship here for just doing basic medical stuff. It's like an infirmary, uh, small little room where she's got first aid, equipment, things like that. You guys are in there, and yeah, she definitely, you guys were talking about the results of the human-on-human uh, -human violence. <laughs> nice. I haven't seen a Crown Royal dice bag in a long time. My, my gaming group at home back in the day, that's what they this, all This is my, all of my mis mismatch sets, so nice. I'm just grabbing some D6s that hopefully will not stab me in the back. Please, please do so, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess what I'll do is uh, while we're doing all of that, I just call up to to Erica and Thurzang and ask if if we got anything else, if we see anything else since I've uh, not been at a you know a, a port window. Yeah, and they inform you of as what we've been talking about. They inform you that there basically is a single shuttle that's attached to the attached to the main docking station in the center of this. Uh, lab ship, and then also that there is the explosion damage on the one section of it. Um, and you'll be talking to Erica for this, Captain Erica, and you can hear Thursang making his drone noises that he uses when he pilots. Ooh. Just like beep, 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 beep. because you know you can't actually hear the drone, so he makes noises for it. Sure, sure, absolutely, absolutely. All right, so yeah, you all reconvene. Then we'll say you're all on the bridge at this point. All the information with one another has been shared, and you all are standing here trying to plan what to do next. Do I say we get one that. way or another? We're gonna we're gonna board, right? Yeah, we're... whether it's with the docking ring or what you, I thought you mentioned, Kevin, that there was a way to board, like uh, airlocks on the outside of the ring. Yeah, there's other airlocks that you could get into. They don't really support the ship fully docking, but they would be able to, if you guys had a small skiff or something attached to your your ship that you could use, or, they could uh, probably accommodate that. EBA, we went out in spacesuits and... Yep, you could do that as well. Ideal. 
It's just very tense. You got to jump at just the right moment because we won't match a spin or anything like that. And you just got to time it right or you'll splat against the wall. Very cinematic. Well, let, me, let, me make, let, me, <laughs> let me make a roll for something real quick. Captain Erica's piloting. Oh, um, oh Captain, no. Captain Erica actually has you guys currently in a rotation pattern that does, in fact, match the ship. Nice. The other ship. So you guys are going to be not having that problem. Or do we have a small craft on board? Like, like you said, a skip or? Uh, yeah, I'd say you guys have a small, uh, you know, they're called uh, rafts. Air raft. Basically, yeah, an air raft where basically they're small little, uh, just the four of you would fit into it. So you can't take, you know, we'll say your crew is maybe 12, 13 people and PCs, you know, uh, but the, the four of you could all fit upon it if you want to take it over. There has a small engine that could get you the short distance between the ship you are here and over there, plus have some despair because it's made for, you know, oh, our ship's blown up. We're going to go over to this other place kind of thing. But it's not enough to be your main transportation device. But, but yeah, you guys could take that over there if you want. It's pretty easy to pilot. It wouldn't be super... Uh, you wouldn't need to take the captain who is like your pilot pilot. You you all could probably figure out how to do it. If you want to go that route. I mean, there's nothing wrong with us hitting this as like a two-prong kind of thing and pincering things in the middle. I th I think docking in the, the central spire for the ship would be safest once we drop you at one of the airlocks. Right. So... Let's talk about that drone for a minute. That small little uh, little friend that you are sending on over there. If you could go ahead and <laughs> go ahead and make a um, either piloting or a uh, the engineering. We'll call it. Uh, could I do that remote ops thing? Yeah, we could do that. Okay. Yeah, you, you, yeah. It's more of a button readout you're doing. Sure. <gasps> Better dice. Oh, you're Let's hope so. I see. I, I mean, thought that was a <gasps> not bad. Not not the best, but nine. Nine? Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's gonna gonna beat the eight, no problem. So yeah, you get a, you, you pilot it over there, and it goes up on the top of the shuttle craft, and there is a small a manual override, I guess you could say, in the outside of it. And you, uh, if you could make uh, another roll this time, let's have you go ahead and um, do it with uh, your dexterity skill as opposed to your probably intellect skill you were using a moment ago. Okay. 10. 11. Okay. 11. Nice. And it manipulates and it pulls at the manual uh, um, release and as it does so the shuttle drifts off and as it does you see two bodies of people wearing lab coats drift out of where it was connected and float off into space. You've killed them! <laughs> <laughs> oh god, hurry! We need to get them before they die! The way they're moving, they're clearly dead already. Okay. Um, Because they're just lifelessly floating. Can I use it's the like drone? They were trying to get on the shuttle. Essentially, I want to use the drone to, like, then... I mean, it doesn't really take that much. It's kind of like pushing things underwater, where you're just, like... I want to push the ship that's detached, like, down away from the ring so it doesn't just, like, float off into the ring. Um, sure. Okay. And then I'll go after the bodies and get those if if you want them, Doc. Wouldn't hurt, I guess. I'm assuming there will be similar markings, but who knows? Uh, we'll say you guys just take some time. You go ahead and you get the, the two bodies with the little, uh, you know, grabber on the front of your little friend that you sent out. Bring it back and you secure the shuttle so it doesn't float away. And as you return, yeah, you bring the bodies on board. And uh, Doc, you take a time to notice these two bodies. They actually don't have any markings or any damage. They seem to just be dead for some other purpose you're not entirely sure if you want to maybe do uh, another type of like blood test or something i will have you roll for that though i um, would like to yep yeah. sure so same thing as before we'll do a science um medicine roll with your education uh 12 okay 
Uh, taking a blood sample, again, running it through the same type of parameter equipment that you have here on board, you find out that the two bodies here, they seem to have died of natural causes, which is strange because the one looks to be a man probably in his 20s. In pretty good shape and the other and uh the other one seems to be a guy who's in his maybe 40s 50s both human uh they're both wearing lab coats as i mentioned and uh they yeah they don't seem to have taken any damage they just seem to have just died this is strange i don't quite know what to make of the readings but they seem to have died of natural causes they, I... they didn't die from the cold like being they spaced. were dead before. Well, I think they were dead before they got spaced. That's weird. Yeah. Can you check for poisons? Did my roll check for that already? Yeah, there was no no poisons, no anything crazy. There's it... Nothing. I I checked everything I could think to check. Speaking of things to think to check, has anyone hailed the the station? No, not yeah. yet. But no. we were told communications were out. That's so, true. That's true. Good thinking. Although it wouldn't hurt to like just give it a try. Right. Hello. Yeah, you guys try opening a communication with them and to no avail. It it uh your ship lets you know that a connection cannot be connected at this point. because uh, yeah, their their uh communications are completely down. And kinda of keeping and an he... eye out for that, that fellow that was in the arm that has he reappeared, or did he disappear afterwards, or has he just been hanging out there? Right. Hito, if you could go ahead and make me a recon roll, please. Because while they're doing all this, you being an agent, being very up and up on keeping observations about you in your nonchalance kind of way. Uh, it's That's intellect, right? Uh, yeah, you'll use it with your intellect. Eleven. 11, yeah. As you are looking at the ship, as uh, the laboratory ship, as you guys are doing all of this, you notice that there is a figure who is looking out one of the portholes. Uh, you'll know from the way that Captain Erica explained everything to you, this is a different porthole. It's on the other side of the rotating uh, section. Uh, this individual is bald. Um, he has a unkept beard that looks like it's it's short to the skin though like it's maybe from not shaving for a couple of days rather than just like a, a full grown beard uh, he has uh, some markings on his face like spl- like a, like a smudge of like oil or grease or something and one of his ears is half ripped off of his head he watches all of you his eyes narrow as your guys's eyes meet your gaze locks to one another, and then he dips out of view. Uh, all right, Captain, I think I got eyes on your, uh, John Doe. He's, uh, keeping tabs on us and however we're circling this ship. Um, I don't think we're going to get any other information from these floating bodies, so we're probably going to need to dock. Is there any way that we can communicate with him without going over there? See him in the porthole and wave and see what right. happens. Can we, like, write on oh. signs or something? Right, or I was thinking, I assume the ship has exterior lights, and their ship would, too. That assumption's true. Maybe we could start some sort of uh, Morse code blinking or something to see if anybody responds. So all I can think of is, like, the scene in Serenity where... Like the ship comes up and like is pretty much like flying next to them sideways and watching in their 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 like yeah. front view area. Is it is it possible to like uh, can Captain Erica fly us in and essentially set that same spin so we're looking in a window instead so that you can try and Morse code that directly where he was. Yeah, she does that. She uh, she takes the ship, she rotates it slightly, maintaining the same orbit, as it were, around the centrifugal nature of the outside of it. And you guys are directly lined up with that same window that Hito just pointed out, and you drift along. And uh, who wants to roll a 1d6 for me? Dibs. All right, roll 1d6 for me, please. Four. You guys sit there for about 40 minutes, staring in that window, and... Do not see that man return. Could we have sent like some 
flashes just in case he's like not obviously in the window but is still in the area sure sure um let's have somebody whoever wants to do it uh go ahead and make a persuasion or a persuade roll with social or don't think that's me with or maybe or with education if you want to do it more like with uh Know, using the controls or using buttons or using some sort of electronic equipment instead. I, I, I'll do it. I, I'll do it, I guess. Okay. Go up to the bridge and uh, do not it. Not my uh, forte. D6 or two? Yeah, you're going to roll 2D6 plus your, what uh, What skill are you going to use for it? I'm going to use education. Okay, that's your ability. I, and I what an skill electronics do? computer. Would that be better? Um... That's yeah. That'd be more for like the typical type of hailing that you guys already did that didn't have any any avail. But you could. Uh, what other skills do you think you might want to try? <laughs> nah, streetwise. <laughs> nah, I'll use education. We'll throw up some gang symbols and see if yeah, right to yeah. respond. Right. Andromeda Nine. for life. <laughs> Nine. Nine? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, you flash the lights in, uh, you know, the antiquated Morse code that used to uh, be heavily used uh, before the common things that you guys that use, and uh, there's no response after these 40 minutes. You don't see him, there's no response. Yeah, I think, I think we're going to need to probably dock there, get face-to-face -face with this guy. See what's going on. Do we want to do through a single airlock, or should we do the two-point entry? Judging by the the size the size of the ship, and uh, I guess whatever entries we, we 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 saw, the two airlocks we've we've seen, how long would it take for us for two teams to move from one end? and meet up to like towards the middle. Oh, splitting the party. Uh, interesting. I'm, this, I'm, I'm asking uh, <laughs> the question before I decide. Hey, yeah, no, of course. Uh, the size of the vehicle, uh, the, the ship, if it's something that doesn't have debris or problems in the way, if it's all relatively open to walk around, you could estimate it would probably take two different teams on either side converging into a common point, probably realistically up to an hour and a half yeah that's not uh that's not tactical that's not that's not good at it well no, so there's, there's the just... arm there's like the docking arm and is Let's there uh i don't know why i'm asking that in my voice uh is there a a, a port so the docking arm comes down and meets the ring is there a an entry port on the other side of the ring from that so it would be almost i mean not instantaneous we meet up but it would be a much shorter trip to meet up going down that straight line yeah you could maybe try to get in that way it would take about half the time okay that's still a long time i can only part. protect so many yeah. of you yeah that's still that's still a bit of uh a long time and well, well we need to figure out something just standing around here is not going to get yeah. us anywhere captain we'll, we'll, so. we'll, we'll doc we'll take the one port and then we'll move accordingly because we don't know what's in there we don't know what's going on uh, don't think it's smart or tactical to split up and traverse the inside of that station, you know, with half strength. I'm, I'm concerned that that fellow doesn't have good intentions. He's been very dodgy about communicating with us. Well, you gotta find out. I, I'm just concerned about locking the ship to the ring Anna, Anatoly I, looks like you're ready Captain oh, yeah, I've got the ACR there. with the scope on it yeah dialing it in Anatoly you're you're tactically mindful do you think we should go in from the outside or from the the docking arm um the docking arm is the safest it's also where anybody would expect us but 
given that this was a laboratory ship, I doubt they have any soldiers or fighting persons on board. I guess I'm just concerned that the, uh, whatever it is killed these people could get onto our ship. If we well, so far, it. so far the bodies we've seen haven't been wearing any kind of protective suits. They've just been in their civvies. Uh, I think if we go in, I've got my combat armor on. We go in in back suits. That'll give us, offer us some protection. True. Yeah. Does um, does Hito have any armor? You're looking at it. <laughs> yeah. I am the armor. <laughs> yeah, my, 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 my armor is uh, custom to look like normal clothes. It's yeah, custom. right. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So he does have some tactical armor for sure. Uh, Captain, just... I wouldn't think the doc has any armor, um, other than if she were to put on a vac suit. Um, I'm sure you have a little bit of armor, don't you? I have Thursday? a flying vest. I don't know, Doctor. Am I assuming? Do you have armor? There is, uh, there are two things listed under here, so. Oh, okay. Well, good. I'm, I'll be brought it up. So, yeah, so you guys are ready to go. If you guys, so what do you guys wish to do? You guys wish to go right over there, or do you guys want to do any other preparations, or what is the method here? I'm thinking we should, uh, dock on the, on the arm and just have the crew of our ship lock the door and make sure no one scooches over. Behind. Yeah. Sounds good, Captain Erica says. I uh, trust you all will be careful, and uh, don't hesitate to shoot first if you have to, Anatoly. First, we must eat. You cannot go on combat raid. Oh, on an I'm so empty glad stomach. you said that. <laughs> I have made borscht <laughs> for everyone. Excellent, I love it. Borscht. Yes. Yes, yeah, so you guys. So we have a little montage of you all sitting around like a family, enjoying <laughs> your dinner together. Nice, fresh uh, borscht. That's not the one that's cold, is it? A warm I warmer cold. It is. I okay. However you want it, we can make it either way. I have some a really like it bright, hot. Some like it cold. I have some a like bright yellow stocking table. cap with the the ear flappies pulled down and danglies that yeah. I wear while we eat. Nice. nice. I hope you're wearing your bib too that we made for you, custom. Because absolutely. And. Uh, the one sits right on either right to left of you. They're the ones who need the bibs, really. <laughs> it's like going to see a Gallagher show. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, so you, you know guys. What? Maybe are... you could use this borscht to dye your hair. Your hair, if, you know, it's bright red. Don't so. you remember that one time I tried it, and it ended up being that kind of like weird. It didn't it didn't react well with my hair? That's all I'm saying. It was a little weird. Yeah. What is borscht anyway? Isn't it beet soup or something like that? I think I think it's something like that. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, it is. A sour soup with meat, vegetables, and stuff. Nice. Mmm, right. delicious. Yeah. So after, yeah, after about a little less than an hour, you guys are ready to go. You're armored up. You have a nice full belly of borscht and you are ready to head on over to the ship. So uh, you guys dock Captain Erica in that time, docks you guys onto where the shuttle was, and the airlock seems to be secure, so you guys are ready to go on over. So uh, you guys head on over to the ship. What is the marching order, as it were? Who goes on first, I guess, is what I'm asking more specifically. I do. I think I, think I should, or Hedo, just based on the fact we have decent armor. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I'll go first. Okay. I'm more, cool. I mean, I, I have this biting thing that I do when I need to, but people taste terrible. You'd think it would be otherwise, but it's not. People taste terrible, and so I try not to. So I will, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll go last, putting the dock in between us to make sure that she's safe. Uh, plus I have this nice, you know, sniper rifle that lets me be a little more hands-off. Nice. Okay. So, in that case, then, uh, Hito, you go on first. You all march on the the, uh, the way that's been docked here. There is a tunnel, maybe, we'll say, 10 meters that goes from where you're connected to your ship to where the inner part of the ring would be. And uh, that part currently does not have any um, air in it because it's connected. Once you guys are there, there are there is a door that shuts. The other side is repressurized, and then you enter in properly. 
So you guys make your way across, and as you come over to the other side, and the door opens, and you step into that airlock chamber to uh, have the repressure go across. If you could, Hito, in front, go ahead and make me another recon roll, and uh, let me know what you might notice, please. So you're going to be using recon and your intellect. Seven. Seven? Seven. Yeah. Okay. And always aware, always vigilant. You don't notice anything out of the ordinary as it all locks down and the air repressurizes. The four of you find yourselves now the doors behind you shut, effectively sealing you off from the safety of the Orpheus. And the doors in front of you open, and there is a shift in the air slightly as the pressure comes out to fill the space. And now you guys are effectively on the other ship. So... Hito in one, the. Okay. One thing my combat armor does is it's got a tactical video suite, so it's going to give me a bonus on tactics. If we get to that point, but oh, I would nice. also assume, like as a tactical video suite, it's going to be giving me readings on oxygen and temperature, you know, very basic stuff, nothing game. Absolutely, absolutely. And then so I'm also in like full recon mode too. Okay. So, Jeremy, you mentioned I had some technical difficulties. Does that seem to be okay now, or...? Yep, you're all good now. Thank you. Cool, cool, cool. All righty. All righty. So, uh, you guys all head on over to the other ship, and what you find is it is long corridors of hallways. There seem to be non-load-bearing walls, partition walls that are up around on all the different sides of you as you make your way in further to the, uh, the vessel here. You'll notice that right by where you guys entered, there is a placard that's on the wall that says, Welcome to the Calendula, uh, and has information about when the specific laboratory ship was crafted when it was launched uh the crew on board it does show that there are currently going to be 12 different folks that are on board in a science uh, uh medical uh, research division capacity there's also two pilots and a small crew the crew isn't mentioned by name or whoever they might be but does have a full list of these 12 individuals that are listed on here um human names you would guess by the way that they sound um, except for one that you would recognize being a Varger. You would recognize would be a Varger name of Jan Vartha is one of the names on the manifest. Um, that is marked as the head researcher here. And you... Does it appear like there are any... Um like interface computers that we can get into and check systems and such or is that further in like there's nothing we can interface with here there are some computer terminals on the wall right here but they don't seem to be anything that interfaces directly into a larger scale mm -hmm. they seem to be personal computers but you can definitely try to uh, get into them if you'd like sure um, the thought that has crossed my mind, well, so, uh, hey, everyone, uh, don't go too far. I'm just going to check something real quick. And I'm going to go over and be like, beep, boop, 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 and make noises because can't hear them. And, uh, <laughs> uh, make some, uh, checks. I, I want to see what kind of information I can get into. The thought that has crossed my mind is what were they researching here? Yeah, okay. If you could, go ahead and make an electronics computers check. Nice. Using either your education or your intelligence. So I like those those additions. However, with my dice roll, I got a five. Okay. You are typing in, and this terminal is relatively easy to get into, so it does, in fact, open up. It doesn't have any direct access to what the experimentation or research was in, in this lab ship, but it does offer you insight into the ship at large. Uh, you see that there are several subfolders, one of which would be layout and design. Another one has to do with the mission statement. There is one that is a message from your astro navigator. Uh, there is another one that just has a typical standard uh, 
uh, Lysani laboratories uh, full on, like when they were founded, how long they've been around, who's in charge of that. Uh, you know, it's just informational type things. This would be like a tourist would use this yeah. to find out about the station. And there's, is there anything on there that's like, life support is 100% A-OK? <laughs> um, there's nothing like that that okay. you see. It doesn't seem to connect into the computer's larger systems like that. Um, maybe you could hack into it. Uh, somebody with some better computer skills would probably be able to maybe try to do that. But I have good computer kind of skills, damn it. <laughs> find a better terminal. I have decent computer skills, but we could also find a better terminal. Yeah, this one's broken. It's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you sure it's broken? I'll take it. Nah, let's find a better one. Yeah, use a different one. <laughs> Yeah, there's probably other terminals, uh, definitely something that would be meant for what you're looking for. Uh, areas that might be places you would think to look for that would be actually in a lab, like an actual direct research lab of some sort, or maybe in an engineering bay, or definitely on the bridge or control center of the ship. Do we have any kind of schematics for this? Like, so we know Not what these... Currently. Okay, so like we can't punch up from our own computer some kind of like thing... It's like this yeah, is just like a standard hull design, right? It does seem to be standard. Uh, as you're walking in and moving, making your way around, you notice that there's some slight modifications to the layouts of the walls and things like that. Hmm. But for the stand layout, it seems to be typical for a vessel like this. I mean, it's a ring, right? So it's a it's a hallway with doors on either side. In Do essence, we... there's a couple of off shift yeah. branches that are enclosed in a certain way. Sure. But, okay. yeah. Do we know where the closest lab or the control center is? Uh, go ahead and make another electronics computers test. Someone else should do that. Someone okay. else should roll all of my okay. dice. So oh. again, you're, you're going to do electronics computers uh, with your education or your intelligence. Ten. You got, oh, Ten. You got it. Okay. You see that there is a laboratory that's nearby down a corridor that goes ahead and veers off to the right again there's some sub corridors that are all interconnected on the ringed section of this vessel uh you also see that there is a sub folder that actually has uh for your welcoming needs an entire layout to find your specific room and you uh click on that and download that and that comes up so you all as you'll see on our Albert Rodeo that we're using. Uh, you guys get a little bit of a floor plan here that has different sections. It doesn't have the full layout of the ship, but what it's going to actually have is different sections of the ship that are kind of detailed, uh, different quadrants of the full ring that are uh, spliced apart, uh, almost like uh, they were dissected. Uh, this is very scientific the way this was all put out. And you guys can all see that you are, uh, you'll see your, these are your little figures here. Sorry, folks home, you can't see this, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> they can see the map right now. They can see the map. Well, that's cool. Look yeah. at that. It, I mean, the map is, whoops, I'm uh, clicking on the wrong button. The map, yeah, it's the same map, but uh, you guys are going to be able to actually interface with it and do stuff. Um, so you guys are, you'll notice, in quadrant one. Okay. We'll put you down there. And, uh, yeah, the bridge would be up near quadrant four, which is on the, where you guys are positioned here in the center, you came down and it goes up and around. So the quadrant one would be on the bottom, two, three, four. So the quadrant four would basically be where you guys are currently positioned. You would go to the left, making your way uh, clockwise around the exterior, and you would come to quadrant four, which would have the main bridge within it. And you said that I could send this to my own data pad or whatever and I can send it to the other three so we can have it in front of yeah, us all absolutely. the time. Yeah. yeah, you slave it over so that you're able to see it and to reference it for sure. Yep. Anything else you want to find out on the computer? What about a um a roster of of the crew who's here? Uh, there is a listing of the different positions. Uh, specifically, if you look through and you bring up the different names, you'll see that, as I mentioned, there are 12 members of the medical research staff. Uh, one of the names that stood out was that uh, Jan Vartha. There is also a Hollow Ezram, which is a 
scientist who is positioned in the auxiliary laboratory. And there are a bunch of other different names as well, all branching off from Lysani Laboratories. You want to fold this to 12 names? Do you want me to make up 12 names? <laughs> no, no, but everybody is, is on the payroll of Lysani, it looks like. There's no, like, guests or uh, any anybody that, that came on board afterwards. Right. Uh, no, nothing like that's listed. Can we uh, kind of determine who's who's who as far as like um, like doctor? Do you know if any of these names match up with the the people that we have brought on board? Is there any way to figure that out? Did they have any uh, name tags? Oh yeah, good call. Yeah. Kind of figuring that out, kind of moving back and forth between what you have seen, what you're seeing now on the computer. We'll even say that as you click on a name, it brings up a small little dossier about them with a headshot, uh, a professional photo, as it were. And uh, you'll see that, uh, yeah, this uh, Jan Bartha is a Varger, as I mentioned, who looks to be a gray kind of mottled colored fur that looks to be kind of... Uh, sleeker uh closer to the to the skin not uh longer and wild and uh more uh fluffed out like uh thurzang's is going to be um but yeah he is the scientist in the main laboratory head of the science division there there's also going to be a hollow uh ezra which as i mentioned is a uh, younger woman looks like she's maybe in her early 30s she has long blonde hair she has a nice smile in the picture which really stands out because one of her two front teeth is chipped at an angle um you'll notice that a lot of the other scientists are your typical middle-aged guys uh, some of them have thinning hair. They've all got glasses. Uh, they're all wearing lab coats. They've got doofy smiles in their pictures. They don't really stand out. It's really only those two who stand out because they look so different from the others. And from looking at it, you'll also see, Rahila, that there actually is some information about the bridge crew that is off to the side as well. And so as you start clicking through that, you're going to see that there is an engineer for the station whose name is Pent Stavro. And Pent Stavro is, seems to be a um, non-binary individual who has short cropped uh, brown hair and in the picture looks very irritated to have their picture taken. <laughs> and there's also the Astro Gator for the vessel, a Harris Slocomb who is, you'll all notice, a tall, old man with a closely cropped beard. And when you see it, specifically Hito, this is the man you saw staring out all of at all of you through the window. What was that name again? Uh, Harris Slocum. It's H-A-R-I-S. It's the first name. Slocum is S-L-O-C-O-M-B-E. And right as you notice that, you all suddenly hear a scraping sound somewhere on the ship. Almost like something is being dragged across the floor. Eugenius and then you hear Pyramid a... Head. Sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, right. You're all screwed if it's Pyramid Head. Right? And then you uh you hear a <laughs> and you see that up ahead of you there is shadows on the wall of something is running down the hallway backlit by some flickering light from somewhere down the hall that has gazed down long stretches down the hallway around you and you see two large forms come around the corner at the end of the hall these are creatures that are not unlike dogs or wolves that we would know here on earth these are lycurs which are carnivorous dog-like animals that are a popular pet throughout different sections of the subsector here and these ones look really angry there is saliva dripping and drooling off of their mouths and they are snapping and hissing and from where you're standing hito i'm sorry i'm uh, not hito excuse me um where you're standing rahila right next to the terminal there is a voice that comes out of the terminal you're not all supposed to be here, so I'm going to have to just get rid of you now. And it cuts off suddenly. And as these creatures run in towards all of you, we're going to see how this goes down as we're going to enter into combat. Oh, snap. Okay, so everybody needs to roll initiative for me, please. 
that is going to be 2d6 plus either your dexterity or your intelligence. If you are relying basically on your your speed and your wit about you, or if you're trying to actually make a tactical movement to try to have your initiative be resultant from that. Metal dice for the win. Ooh. What did you get? That's a 12. Oh, heck yeah. It's about time you started rolling. Right? Oh, welcome to the game, Jeremy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I just I just got home yeah, right. with these dice. How's everybody else doing? Just go ahead and call them out. Ten. Ten for Anatoly. Eight. Eight for Rahila. I was muted. Ten. Well, ten. Ten as well. Okay. Me too. Uh, these things are going to go on. Let's see. Uh, Eleven. Okay, so... Thurzang, you are going to be able to react first. Now... Entering into combat, what would typically happen is one of you is designated the leader in the combat to determine how tactically, how well you work together as a team. I'm going to assume, because of the way you all presented yourselves into this scenario, that that would be Anatoly. But if you guys believe it's somebody else, we can go ahead and change that. Uh, who do you think wants to be the uh, on-point leader of your little combat troop here for this? Does that make sense for you? I usually turn to Anatoly or Orhito, depending on what the situation is, and this is more violent, like obvious violence as opposed to silent violence. Uh, so going with Anatoly. Okay. I would also vote for myself <laughs> well, from a meta perspective because I've got the suit, <laughs> I've got the suit going on, which gives me a plus one to my tactics, uh, nice. and I have one tactics. And what tactics allows you to do, or so I have two dice. I can give out to my team members yes. uh, that they can use on any role. Absolutely. I love it. Oh, so, yeah. I'll, I'll cede command to Anatoly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Alrighty. So, now that I have you guys all in order, we do have two of you working on a 10, so what we're going to do is we're going to have you guys work in concert at the same time. You can, we can kind of just, amongst yourselves, you can determine if that is going to be you doing moves together, uh, I'm going to wait slightly, he's going to wait slightly, that sort of thing, um, because you both have 10s. Um, so we're going to have Hito and Anatoly. So first, entering into combat, let's go ahead and let's have you, Anatoly, make a leadership role for us to determine your tactics, what's going on. So you're going to go ahead and make a tactics check with the bonuses that you have. So you can use your tactics and that bonus that you had from your ability plus your, uh, this would probably be your social. Yeah. Okay. Or uh, you can maybe use your uh, intellect. intellect. Yeah, I was saying, or your intellect could work too. And that's what's nice about the system. You can actually use the skills in this system with different attributes, like shooting for like guns, for example, is not always dexterity. You can use an intellect to determine something about a gun or interact with somebody about something. So you guys can, you know, we can have an open narrative like that. So nice. totally, totally. Well, I got a nine. Okay. Uh, which is an effect of one. Yes. So that, I believe that's um, how many dice I have to give out this round. Gotcha. I think that's how. Mm -hmm. Yes, the uh, traveler specifically making leadership uh, hands out a number of boons equal to the effect on their die when you make a leadership test. So yeah, so you can hand out one boon to somebody, which is going to be basically uh, like uh, we had Deb do before when she had a boon, so she had that extra die that she rolled. And it totally can't in the mo in the moment he can kind of give that out to people as he's coordinating tactics. In Immediately the give it to Hito and say down low. Nice. Okay. Uh, so Thurzang, you will be first. Okay. Uh, so just a couple of things to clarify on un under weapons and such. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a kg column. Is that essentially weight? Is that kilograms? Or okay, cool. And then yeah, there's the t moment. the tl column. I'm not sure what that is. That is for the tech level. That is basically what level uh, the weapon is operating at. Tech I level see. is mainly more something determined upon what type of campaign you're playing. Okay. Doesn't really have any effect on what we're doing today. It's all roughly Perfect. the same tech level. So. Um, I will shoulder, like, bring up the rifle and take aim and just uh, be like, uh, permission used violence, sir. <laughs> and if Anatoly gives me the okay, I'm going to shoot. Oh, violence authorized. Excellent. 
Nice. Uh, All so right, let's and, see. Uh, and, one, and one thing, Thurzing, uh, that you said, uh, which also has a mechanical property, is you took aim. Oh, nice. Uh, and aim, aim gives you a, a, for each aim you do, you get a plus one. Okay. Yeah, everybody on their turn is going to have a, uh, a main primary action, a significant action, it's called in the system, a minor action, and then free action, reactions, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, you can, as a minor action, you can aim, and it gives you a plus one. You could choose to, this is more of like the bigger mechanics of the game, you could choose to give up a standard, uh, sorry, a significant action to have two minor actions, and you could just spend your turn aiming, mm -hmm. taking a three next round or gotcha. you can do for two four up to a plus six um or you can just try to fire with just the one aim as nate was just describing so Perfect. it's kind of there's there are some tactics involved if you want to hold your turn or, or you can just do something now it's kind i of mean they're, they're rushing at us correct uh yeah they're yeah. kind of at the end of the hall and you can, yeah. i feel like that's dodging a... is dodging is a big thing in this game okay. cover is mm -hmm. a big thing because we are uh weak Fleshy meat sex. Yeah. Just, yeah, you guys are squishy in this game. This isn't like D&D &D where you got lots of hit points and you get whittled down. This is like one shot can potentially kill you guys. Oh, and then armor is going to reduce uh, damage. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so looking funny. around, there's there's nothing really for us to take cover behind, right? We're in an open hallway in a Early, ring. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I take aim at the one that's on the left. Okay, sure. And I am going to take a shot with my rifle, which I have a one in. And I'm adding cool. one from taking an aim. Yep. So you're gonna add. You're gonna roll your dexterity. Okay. Plus your uh, your guns, rifle, uh, whatever specifically would be. In this case, it's a rifle. So that's a twelve. All right. Yeah, that's definitely gonna hit it. Okay. So you're gonna roll the damage for the weapon. It should say on there as well. Always d sixes, right? Yes. Yep. Excellent. So it might say 2D, which would be two dice, or right. 4D might be four dice. Always D6s, yep. So that is um, 10. 10, wow. And you will also get an additional damage dice equal to the effect. So the effect oh. is the difference, positive or negative, between the target number you needed and what you rolled. Gotcha. So you rolled, you rolled a, a 12? Correct. All right, and you Two. needed an 8, so the effect mm -hmm. is 4. So that's four more damage. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Nice. So yeah, your so your total damage is going to be sixteen. Kevin, if I'm overstepping my bounds no. as the player here, just you know. No, no, no. You're fine. No, explain, no, you're fine. Explaining the game is the point of this stream. Yeah. So no, yeah, you're all no, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Totally cool. No, if I wanted you to shut the hell up, I would have said so. No. <laughs> you're fine. No, totally fine. Not a problem at all, my man. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, it's just, it's gonna take me a minute to get through all the pages and stuff. So yeah, if you have something quicker to say, please, please. All right, cool. Um, yeah, so yeah, you fire and the rifle goes off and poof, it shoots through the shoulder of this thing. Blood sprays out on the wall. It does not slow it in its approach, though. You notice it's okay. still slavering, pierced eyes. It's running towards you. It was a significant blow. You could tell its shoulder is pretty much blown out and destroyed. It's limping now on that arm that you shot at, uh, but it's still coming. Okay. Uh, and as they oh go ahead sorry i was just gonna say is there like a um a door nearby that i can like hit the button and step into the doorway as it opens or something like that yeah. uh just to use as cover as they're heading down let me roll a situation sure uh yes there is there's one you take if you take a five foot step back you can do just that you can take a five foot step uh as you're oh kind of gonna flavor this right yeah, you step back and kind of yeah hit your way through the door and step through the door okay. as part of your your, your movement sure. yeah and then i'll just lean up against the door in case anyone like the door frame so if anyone wants to rub in behind me i'm not eating up the space and just lean with the rifle out nice i love it cool all right, so then the two uh, Lycurs are going to run through the door. One, the one is slower, so its speed has been halved because you shot one of its legs almost all the way off. And the other one is going to continue. I'm going to roll. Uh, there are four of you, so I'm going to roll a d6. Ignore fives or sixes. Someone roll again. Roll again. Two. Uh, so one comes right at you, unfortunately, Rahila. Uh, so as it comes in, it's going to try to bite you. So it's going to roll... Um, this. Okay, so 
trying to again do the target number of eight. It is going to miss you. It comes forward and its jaws snap out. You manage to actually grab up that small case that you have with the red plus on the side of it. You throw it up and its jaws snap around the side of it and you can see its teeth indent into the metal case but do not puncture it uh, luckily it missed you uh, the other one the one that your friend shot he comes up as well he's going to attack um gonna attack you hito and he's going to do again rolling to hit. okay he is gonna hit because he's got a 10 his damage is for a bite is 2d two or two six-sided dice uh, that's going to be six, um, and because he got a ten, that's only, that's two for the um, effect. So you're going to take a total of eight points of damage. Now you said you had armor. Yeah, protection plus two. Okay, so that's going to knock off two for some systems call this soak, some call this reduction, whatever. Uh, so basically, you're going to ignore the two. You're going to take six. Damage is initially going to be taken off of your endurance score. So what is your endurance score right now? 12. 12. So your endurance score is going to drop down to 6, which means that your modifier is going to change as well. Uh, a little bit of bookkeeping that would typically go on a Traveler session. For now, for today, we're playing a one-shot going to make it easier. We'll just have it be that you're just going to take a negative 2 on all of your education stuff instead of you having to refigure out all your abilities and your stats and your skills and all that. Um, that's the we'll best. Make... That's my best. That's my best score. Well, I, yeah, I I will speak up. Yeah, go <laughs> sure, 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 sure. And you could you could attempt to dodge as mm. well as a reaction. Yes, that's true. Yeah, you have reactions. Yeah, I could dodge. I, I think I think I, I I'll try to dodge. Okay, cool. So that's that's your um your two d six uh with the uh, the dex modifier or athletics dex. Trying to beat and where's I don't know if it's itch. seven. Seven? Yeah. Yeah, a second, I'm trying to find dodge on my little cheat sheet here. Minor actions. It's a minor. Oh, reaction dodging. Well, uh, it's a, it inflicts a penalty on their attack roll, so really it should happen for the attack roll as well. Oh, okay. So it's okay. Yeah, and specifically for this, because it's a melee attack, he'd be trying to parry, which kind of works the same way. But okay, roll same, again, or just keep the same seven. That's okay. We'll keep it the same for now. But remember that in the future. Yeah, you all as reactions, you could try to dodge out of the way of people shooting at you. You can dive for cover, or you could try to parry melee attacks as they come in to try to hit you. So that would be something you could try to do with these wolves here. And you also have free actions, which are things that are going to be like pushing a button, yelling at somebody, dropping something, uh, things like that. Uh, yeah, and minor actions will be more like aiming, changing into a different stance, like lying down, crouching, things like this, uh, moving, uh, stuff like that. So we'll just, yeah, we'll leave it for now. It's okay. Uh, it's a one shot. If you die, you die. No, I'm just kidding. Right, and I, and I misspoke. You actually don't roll. With whatever your modifier is becomes a negative modifier. Right. Yeah, you're in effect what the skill is for that specific skill as a negative to their uh, their dice mechanic or DM, yeah. Finally, if you dodge, your next action suffers a minus one. Right. For each for each dodge. So if two of these things are attacking you and you dodge both, your next action is going to be at a minus two. Mm -hmm. so. All right, so, so my endurance goes on to six and I take a negative two on education. On your endurance, sorry. If you have to make like an endurance test, you just get a minus two. Instead of you refiguring out the numbers, because uh, there's yeah. a chart. Like right now, it's a twelve. It goes down to six. To give you an example, uh, so people at home can have an understanding of how the system works. Right now, with a twelve, you're going to have a modifier, a dice modifier, a DM of plus two for all endurance rolls that you make. If it drops down to six, it goes to zero. So you'd have a, a minus two, which is kind of the same as what I said it would be. Um, yeah. Is taken away from all your endurance rolls, but that kind of goes across the board. That affects basically like your hit points and all different things. So just just to try to make it simpler, so we're not all juggling because you could heal each other too. You have a medic, uh, so we're not trying to juggle all these different up and down mechanics with uh, 
modifiers because it can get a little bulky. But um, that's what they do. So uh, at that point, it's going to be Hito and Anatoly at the same time. Uh, I picture you guys both on two different sides of the grouping here of, of the party. What do you guys wish to do? Now, you guys can kind of, because you're working together, you can kind of concert your actions and try to do something together. Or you can kind of take your turns one by one as it would be in a typical role-playing game. I'll let you guys as players decide how you want to approach that cinematically. I oh, don't know. I like to get this uh this air doggy off of me. So <laughs> that's what I'm focusing <laughs> on right now. And I want to protect the doctor. Yeah. Okay. So I want to okay. shoot the one that's on her. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's have um we'll have since you mentioned the first sit, let's go ahead and have you go ahead and roll your attack on the dog in front of you. Now, again, typically in Traveler, because you're close like this, you won't be able to actually shoot it because of your gun. You're all I wasn't dead. gonna shoot it, I'm gonna stab this thing. Oh, urban well, comment. Well, like, close in person. Never mind yeah. that. Okay. I'm he, he he jumped up and bit my arm, so I got him. You yeah. Know, dog cells. I'm just gonna uh, right just between the lung, just the second, the third, and fourth rib. Hell Try to yeah. Get cool. Go ahead and make a melee blade attack. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna use your strength. As strength. Well. All right. So, uh, you, you've uh, studied Durzong long enough to know where that rib is. Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. That is a 13. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's definitely going to hit. So that's going to give you an effect of five, which is amazing. So you're already doing five damage. So go ahead and roll your damage for the. And it is uh, one dice plus two. Okay, so you're going to do one that's die. Ten. That's, yeah, that's, a, that's an added five. So I rolled a three plus two, five plus five, ten. Cool. So this was the same. This was not the one that this, this was, was the one, one that got his. Yeah, that was the one that got his shoulder blown off. Oh, yeah, it is. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. So, yeah, as you, as it's jumping up, it's biting into your arm. You take your combat knife and just you just gank this thing three times right in the rib cage and it drops right in front of you. It is defeated. It is dead. As it goes to zero. Just I, I do whimper a little. That was a little <laughs> close to home. But I understand. I promise pet lovers this will be as violent as it gets because we all love our pets. So I'm not going to be super extreme. But, you know. I mean, beyond it being, you know, an animal or whatever, like, I am a wolf person and this is a wolf thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I just just, uh, whip the blood off. Flip it backwards and get it get ready to charge the next one if if needed. Hell yeah. Okay. cool, cool, cool. Um, now you could again we're talking different you could do multiple attacks at penalties for each attack but that kind of gets a little bit more extreme uh you're within range you could try to attack the other one but we kind of would if that and this is kind of the, the what happens when we're, we get to play when we're learning systems is there's like like retroactive things that we realize but you could have said oh i'm gonna attack both of them if something and then you get minuses and you could do multiple attacks so these are just things to keep in mind so for now yeah you get ready for another attack on yeah. uh, the next one and a, and Anatoly, you're going to shoot at the one that is on your good doctor. Right. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to flick the switch to uh, burst mode, which is going to allow me yeah. uh, fire in three, sh- three bullets per pull of the trigger, mm-hmm. and I add three to my damage for doing so. Oh, yeah. So, let's see if I hit first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might help. Um, Six. Gotta add my bonus. Add your dexterity and your bonus for the weapon seven, if it has one. Seven, eight, so nine. Nine. Cool. That's gonna give you the effect of one because that's gonna bypass the eight to All hit him. Right. So I'm so I'm doing four damage plus. Three D. Yes. Ten. Okay, and that's from one shot, or that's the all of it together. Shots, but. Okay. Well, I didn't know if you had to roll separate because you're doing a burst attack. No, that would be full auto. Right. Okay. Cool. So yeah, you blah blah blah. You just fire into this thing, and uh, you see the wolf in front of you, uh, Doctor, and it is then going to be your turn. Great. Dr. Rahila. Um, quick question. Yeah. I have combat drugs in my equipment. Mm-hmm. What are those? Okay. Do? Xanax. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you take them, they give you a bonus. Uh, it depends on what type of drug it is. Uh, they'll give you a bonus to certain uh, skills that you, uh, certain, I'm sorry, certain attributes that you have that make you big, basically tougher, faster, stronger. We don't condone performance enhancing drugs here in Wanderer's <laughs> Haven, but I just want to let you know what they do in the game mechanics. Um, it would and depend that, on what type as it is. Written, the doctor does have a dark secret. Oh, <laughs> nice. I um, love it. Is taking those drugs like a major action, minor action? What's the action economy for taking? I'll say because you're a doctor, it'll be a minor action. I think anybody else would be a significant action. So I think you could you could take them. Yeah, because you're okay. especially with your dark secret that right? is kind of being showcased a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, so <laughs> I would like to um, do that and okay. then um, I'm just for flavor. I think uh, the wolf is still um, hanging on to my case. Sure. And uh, so I have my mono blade that I'm gonna try and stab it with. Oh that, man, and that thing is insane. I love it. This uh, this group is uh, intense. I love it. Okay, cool. So uh, yeah, you're gonna go ahead. You're gonna roll uh, again melee and blades. Is you're fighting with a blade. And you're going to use your strength. However, because you are a doctor, I would con I would perhaps argue that you could use your education or intellect for the weapon attack instead of your strength because you are surgical with that thing. So it's up to you. Uh, that's a 13. <sighs> okay. Okay. That's going to be an effect of five right off the bat. So what kind of damage does that do? That's... 3D damage, and I rolled 10, so 10 plus 5, 15. Okay. And you take your blade in one, one swift deft movement that you've done hundreds of times before on bodies. You slice across this thing's throat and it drops as well. There is, at the moment that this uh, struggle seems to come to an end, there is a long pause where the four of you stand there for a moment, waiting perhaps for other attackers to come and none come, and where you are positioned right out of that same terminal that you heard the voice before, you hear say, oh, well, that's just not fun at all. You're going to have to go ahead and make this difficult, aren't you? Hey, well, and all the lights flick off. Hey, let's go ahead and take a break real quick, everybody. Let's take five minutes. We're going to step away, take a quick break, and then we'll come back for the second half. We're going to find out exactly what's going on here, uh, the Kalandala, and find out exactly what kind of weird experiments they're doing on these animals, those bastards. And we'll uh, figure this all out. So, yeah, we'll take five minutes. Top off your drinks, top off your snacks, and we'll come right back, everybody. Thanks a lot. Hey, 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 we are back. We're going to finish out our Traveler adventure today with these cool, awesome players. Um, do you know who the Ringer is yet? If so, you win a prize. Enter it into the chat and we'll find out what's going on. <laughs> um, no, this has been a lot of fun. Everybody told me my dice are super loud, so now I'm really excited about that. So, um, welcome back. If you have, uh, did not catch the first half, you know, welcome back to the second half. Uh, we are, well, they are, I should say, characters. They are on a trading vessel that has been tasked with finding out what exactly has gone on on a laboratory research station that seems to have gone dark recently. And now that they are on board, they've been attacked by some strange mutated wolves. And also they hear a voice of somebody who is now actively, it would seem, trying to kill them. So we're going to open right back up with these characters, these players on this ship. Uh, what do you guys want to do after this moment? Uh, yeah, these wolves are laying there. The threat has been neutralized as you guys are here in the moment. What do you guys want to do? You mentioned these, these animals were typical of the area, the subsector or whatever. Um, are they typically known to be used as attack animals? No, they're typically very docile. They're uh, they're pets type animals. Uh, this would be like the equivalent of like how here on Earth we have pet dogs. This would be the same kind of thing. They are the loyal, trusted companions. So for them to be acting this aggressively is a little concerning, for sure. Do we have uh, access to some kind of flashlights, etc.? Uh, oh yeah, sure. Because the power just went out yeah. and bathed you all in dark. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I'll say you guys all do. Yeah, you take a moment. You, know, you flicked on your your uh, your flashlights my at this helmet point. Light. Yeah, I was saying yeah, maybe it's on a helmet. Might yeah. be on my rifle. Helmet light just to keep those hands free. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Put my helmet on. I just you know tap get my helmet on. The eyes are shining. Nice. Very cool. Very Star Lord. I love it. Right. Alrighty, and so yeah, what do you guys want to do? So I believe you guys were going to try to go investigate the lab or perhaps the bridge, try to get some more information about the computer system to find out what was going on here. Is that still the plan, or do you guys want to do something different? So let me let me ask a quick question. Some of you were injured. I was very injured. Yeah. Uh, how does one heal in this system? Sure, sure, okay. Uh, well, you can offer medical attention. Basically, there was first aid, which would be like a quick trying to you know bandage a wound, tourniquet something, things of this nature. Or you can do surgery or medical aid, which would really require a lab or a medical facility. Uh, so within one minute of injury, you can do first aid, which would require you to make a medic test or medic check, I guess you could say. And uh, it's going to be the amount that you are successful the effect as we pointed out earlier will be how much you help them heal back i guess you could say gotcha so i noticed that our doctor has this case this white case with a red x or sorry red cross on it um do we want to try to do that before we continue on i wouldn't i wouldn't be adverse sure yeah okay uh, yeah, so uh, you were mentioning that you were standing next to a doorway, uh, oh, yeah. so you open up into that room, and it's just a, it's a room, it's another, just a regular lab type room, it would seem this entire thing, all the rooms you've looked into as you've been walking around, all seem to be just regular labs, uh, classroom looking things almost, just a square room, some tables, chairs, uh, so yeah, you guys can enter in there, and Regula, if you want to try to... Uh, kind of uh, help everybody out, you can definitely do that. Uh, you'll be doing a check for every person you want to aid that way, but we could definitely take some time to do that. I'm totally down. Was Hito the only one who was injured? I got it, yes. <laughs> Great. I will do some first aid. All right. Yeah, okay, so you can go to roll a medic door. test. Nice, yeah. Um, what ability is that one sure uh for education? you uh, it's gonna be education yep all right uh 11. okay so uh that is going to be three that you're going to get back uh your endurance was what was damaged now your endurance yeah. from the six that's at now is going to go back up to nine that's really with the stuff that you have here on hand and really the facilities the way the power is out and everything's not really operating fully that's probably going to be all you're going to be able to do um i mean there are other things in the game which we're not really touching on today things like you know you can take medicines and stim packs and all kinds of things like that but that's oh, not yeah. really stim me up come on <laughs> combat drugs. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. You do have some more combat drugs. You could do I some have more of that. A good uh, collection of drugs with me right now. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> the ones that you took during that fight, they are actively working on you now. So what? What are those doing to you? Which ones did you take? How is that? Uh, how's that looking? Um. I. So I took. It just says combat drugs on my okay. sheet. Um. Yeah. I think it uh, maybe helped with um, a little bit of strength and to to like balance adrenaline versus uh, like kind of to bring that at, a, at an even level so that I'm not like overly shaky, but um, yeah. Sure, okay. What I'll do is I'll have it be one of the combat drugs that's detailed in our adventure today, actually. Um, so this will be a combat drug known as 1077. It is going to be a improved combat drug that is experimental at this point. And uh, it is a combat drug that's typically used on small animals, but here you are taking it yourself. It's going to give you an increase to your strength and your endurance for 15 so they're going to go up to 15, your score, um, but your dexterity is going to go down by 5, and after about 10 minutes, that's going to wear off. 
Let's go fight something before the 10 minutes is up. Uh -huh. Let's go. You said strength and endurance go up to 15? Strength and endurance, yep. Cool. Yeah, so yeah, you can see the doctor is like, looking like very like, yeah, she's pumped. She's very all, she's ready to do this. I think a 15 is a plus three DM. Yes, you are correct, yep. Which is the max DM that we get with current rules in play, yep. But yeah, so that's what you got going on with that. Okay, can we talk so, about this for a like second? Bane. <laughs> What's that name? <laughs> like Bane, <laughs> right? Yeah. Hulking out. I was born in darkness. <laughs> You've merely adopted the dark. <laughs> molded by it. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, so can we talk about all this for a moment? Um, that was weird. What do you think they're doing to these animals? And should we expect more of that? Uh, don't know. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I'll make sure uh, I reload. I always like Hito's ability to sum up the situation. Right. Yeah. The fewest amount of words. Where do you think that voice came from? Console? Besides the console, every time. No. <laughs> oh no, but it uh, came from anywhere in the ship that they could patch comms through too. Yeah. Um, uh, where was the last location that I saw him through the through the little port window? Uh in So so looking at the schematics, looking at where he was, what quadrant would he be? What was he last in? Absolutely, yeah. So you guys are still in Quadrant 1 right now. Quadrant 4 is where you guys were going to find the bridge and the lab, main labs and things like that. He would have been in Quadrant uh, 1, 2, which would be the other side of the ship from where you guys were headed. Uh, well, <sighs> last known location was Quadrant 2. So I think we got to move through before we even see... Uh, he's at. Would he have been able to shut down the lighting system like that from there? He could probably do it from anywhere. I don't know how long he's been in here. I don't know what he's jerry-rigged or uh, reconstructed. But when we get to a better console, we'll see what, uh, what we're able to do. For the meantime, Speaking just stay vigilant. Speaking of, are light. there any better consoles in this room? Oh yeah, I think there's definitely one at the main like head table in the in the room where would be like the main researcher, or if the, if the, imagine it is a classroom where like where the teacher would be, there is a better console built into the wall there. Okay. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll hop on that. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's okay. see, and uh, cool. see what I can glean from this here uh, their console. Sure. So as you jump on there, you're going to immediately notice that it does have security clearance authorization protocols that are in place. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to get into than the one out in the hall. So, so I have a I have a decryptor. Ooh. Oh, interesting. A decryptor okay. software. Okay. Would that uh, help to? So what will happen is uh, to do a test to try to get in, I was going to have you do that with a Bane, which is going to give you rolling three dice, sure. taking the lesser of the two for your roll. But because you have the encryption software, that would give you a boon. So what we're going to do is have that balance out. It's going to be a straight roll. Straight computers and intelligence? Yes. Okay. Yep. Electronics, computers. Yeah, you can make an argument for either. So yeah, electronics, computers, probably the best choice. And, and... Uh, intellect, yep. Yeah, that's a nine. Okay. So, yeah, so you take some time. I'm going to roll a d6 here. Uh, yeah, so you start hacking in. It's going to take you about 50 minutes, but you're going to be able to do that. In that interim time, before we say exactly what it is that uh, Hito is going to find, uh, while you guys are in the room and, you, you know, you're all kind of trying to figure out what's going on with this point, because you have extended knowledge of the drugs that you're currently taking good doctor can you go ahead and make a let's let's make it a uh a medic education role experimental drugs yes 13 oh, okay 
the way that those two likers were acting, the way that they came at you guys, the way that you know that you feel right now with the drugs coursing through you, you can definitely tell that the research that's going on here has to do with some of the private research that you've been involved in with experimental drugs and having to do with the drugs that you take. So you would guess what they're probably doing here is this is one of the many uh, subroutine unknown of lab ships that are based throughout this section of the, the system, I guess you could say here, that are actively working on uh, combat related drugs, drugs that are trying to make, for lack of a better description, super soldiers or people who are enhanced to fight in the front line of a battle that would be able to, you know, fight for longer without being tired or be stronger, resistant to damage, things of this nature. So, um, probably they were testing on these animals and they happened to get loose. I am going to um, keep most of that to myself uh, and just say something uh, like, uh, well, they were clearly testing on these dogs, uh, which made them extra aggressive. Uh, I would need some better equipment to uh, really define what what they did to them. Um, but it seems like they must have got loose from wherever they've been keeping them. Anything else anybody else wants to do in the last little bit before Kito gets into the system? I mean, just keeping an eye out, make sure no one jumps us. Sure. Yeah, kind of on overwatch. Absolutely. Okay. The two of you are doing that. And uh, yeah, good doctor. You're just thinking about what's going on. Eventually, the drugs that you're on do kind of wear off. Uh, so you have a period of extreme fatigue for about a half an hour as you uh, have the symptoms of the, the drugs kind of going through your system. And Hito, as you're looking through the system and trying to figure out exactly what's going on, you're going to find out with the role that you're going to get bypass the main security overrides and it gives you access into the main research facilities computer in here as well as information into the status of the bridge you do see that each one of these two is going to have their own security protocols so you can continue to hack further into the system but you would have to do each system independently if you wanted to do that but you could do that mm, i'll do the first one Okay, you want to find out about the lab then specifically. Yeah, and then okay. we'll see where we go from there. Okay, go ahead and make me another test. And your last one, because of the success to it, uh, you're going to get a uh, plus two to your roll. It's an eight, 10, 12, 13. Cool, okay. Uh, you find that once you're in through the main security protocols, that hacking into the specific laboratory section, the files that they have there, is a lot easier than what you did before. When you get hacked into here, you find out that there is a entire bevy of a list of different uh, subroutines, different folders that detail different tests. You can click on them and bring them up. They actually have, most of them have actual pictures, charts, a lot of medical jargon that you may or may not be too familiar with, but all of them also have small little data files that if you enter into one, you'll find are actually videos. Um, some of these files are over a course of about a month. Some of them are over a course of just a few days, but none of the files are any newer than eight days ago, which is the day before the system went dark. Let's see. All right. So, um, we don't know what's going on in this eight days, but I'll go ahead and download uh, these files to a USB that can be used for, uh, for or uh, yeah, download them to a USB. So I may be able to use this for uh, blackmail. Uh, oh. Yeah, but uh, uh, <laughs> I'll, okay. I'll download that and then see if I can. What was the next system? Uh, it's like the bridge. It's the main operating system if you yeah. could though while you're downloading uh go ahead and make another electronics computers roll for me with your uh intellect or your education oh, so anything else any boons anything else no all right cool 
That is uh, nine. Nine. Okay. Make yeah. Roll. So I just hit something with my dice. Okay. Um, yeah. So you download a majority of the files. You just don't have enough room in your uh, your drive to download everything. I mean, this is terabytes of information, uh, but you get a good chunk of it, enough that would definitely be usable, like several full studies of several different animals to, to yeah. see that, yes, in fact, they were being tested on. And kinda, not. I, I kind of want to, like, split them up. Some, like, uh, some from the beginning, some from the middle, and then a little bit before it went dark. Some from, like, yeah. the before it went dark. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. You do so. You do so. And then you wanted to look into the uh, the bridge. Yeah, I'm trying to get on the bridge to see if I can override his override. See if okay. I can over, uh, just, you know, see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So this one you're going to do with a Bane because he actually has security protocols built into it to hide certain things. Mm -hmm. um, you have a decryption kit. So that's going to be, however, with uh, that boon from that, it's going to balance out. So it's a straight roll, basically. Straight roll. Yeah. All right, let's go. That's oh. pretty handy to have. <laughs> ah, booyah, kasha, that's a 12. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and that's uh, that's that's total, or your intellect total. has to be added to that as well? Okay, cool. Um, it takes some doing. I'm going to make a roll against it. Yeah, yeah, something. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Booyah, Come on. What'd okay, you okay. You... Uh, continue to try to override the system you notice that there is a sub protocol it seems to almost be like you can tell by the way it's reacting someone is on a different terminal someplace else manually trying to combat what you're doing and the two of you enter into a test of wills of just who is faster quicker better at manipulating computers and after a struggle of a few moments you actually barely went out the day and you break through the security protocols and get access to the bridge um just go ahead and roll a straight d6 for me. While this is going on, we all notice that, like, numbers start floating around and there's, like, lights. <laughs> yeah. It's just like hackers. Yes. It's, that's exactly oh, what yeah. this looks of like. Of course. Montage. Of course. Right. Yes. <laughs> I got a two. A two? Okay. I think that you're going to find out two big secrets about the system before he's able to override you again. So I'm going to have this be, I'm kind of borrowing from a different system. Uh, you're going to ask me two questions about something that's going on in the system here, and I have to answer them truthfully. Uh, two quick questions. All right, so I already got all the information of basically what's going on. They've been experimenting on everything. What's he hiding? I don't have... Uh... That's yeah. One of the questions. What 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 is what is he tr actively trying to hide? Um, those don't necessarily. It doesn't necessarily need to be in depth. But I just want to know like the names and and the uh, gist of the files that he's trying to keep hidden. Sure. Uh, you find uh, you were just about to open them up when the firewall came up and blocked you off. That he specifically is trying to close off some private messages to an H Slocum, which is this guy that you have recognized now because of his dossier, um, from someone known as Butler Chemicals. You're not sure what Butler Chemicals is? Maybe your doctor will. And Butler Chemicals... And the second one, the second thing I want to know is, where is he? That specific shutoff came from a private quarters in uh, Quadrant 1, so he's right around where you guys first saw him. Right. Okay. Okay. And then the firewall comes up, you are blocked out of the information, but yeah, you had brief control. I will say for free that you will find out that, yes, he has manually turned off the lights, and you will find that with the scan, the only living things that are still on board, because it showed like little blips where people were and things were located, there are four dots in the location that you guys are currently at, of course, which would be you guys. There is one in that quadrant where he is at, and there is a fourth one that is somewhere between the two. It looked like it was moving down a hallway that is near quadrant one where he is at. Towards him or towards us? 
It seemed to be moving in a direction away from you guys towards where he is at. All right. So after his hacking spree, you guys are all kind of uh, back in the moment with one another. And uh, how much of that information do you share with everybody? You know, uh, I took away the drive and I said, like, all right, <clears throat> found him. He's in quadrant one right now where I saw him last private quarters there's a I briefly got to see some life signs some blips there's a four of us him and something else in here something or someone else in here uh, any of you familiar with uh, butler chemicals without any rolling uh, you are able to know Rahila that butler chemicals is a pharmaceutical company that often has uh, contracts that are in opposition to Lysani Laboratories, which owns this station. So it's their competitor, basically. Great. Uh, I will share that with the group. Um, yeah. Butler Chemicals is the competitor to Lysani Laboratories. So he was selling information to the enemy. <laughs> Well, so what are we going to do? Go back with this information to uh, to Dogley or stop them all together? I asked to the, to the. So that's a good question. We kind of got what we came for here. You got the files. We got some information on what's going on. No, I got the files. I got the files, but you don't know I got the files. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's get the files. <laughs> what have you been doing at that playing Pac Man? <laughs> this man is playing Galaga. Can you at least turn on the lights? <laughs> no, no I, I couldn't. He's actively hack counter hacking my counter hack. Uh, Who is master. he? Who is this mastermind? Mastermind, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'll label him that, but uh, this guy, and I point to a, uh, which I should have already pointed out when we were looking at, I guess, the dossier. Um, yeah, so you, you see the enemy, oh. as it were. Yeah, he is a uh, uh, a human who ha is a uh, bald head. He's got a closely cropped uh, black and slightly salt and pepper beard, and he is wearing what looks to be a jumpsuit of some sort in the picture. He is listed as the astro navigator of the vessel. Yeah, so uh, they were in air experimenting on animals with uh, drugs of some sort, as far as I saw. But uh, I was trying to focus on getting through all those firewalls, and then he just started counterhacking. So it was a bit of a fight, so I only got a few things. He's in quadrant one, so if we keep moving forward, we'll be able to get there, but there's something, something else in here. And it's sort of moving towards him, so I don't know if we want to take him back for questioning. That might be the bonus Dogly Parm Dogly promised us. But we may have it may be a fight. So Anatoly kind of quickly assesses the situation in his mind. You know, all the boasting he always does compared to actually the kind of actions he takes and is he doing it for altruistic reasons, or is he doing it, uh, you know, just to uh, better his, how other people see him? Doesn't really quite matter, but he, he finally announces to the group, uh, he is probably responsible for the deaths of at least three of his crew members. We should bring him in. Is that required? Like, when you say bring in, do you mean as is, or... Uh, I say we break a few bones. I mean, if he if he tries to kill us, is is yeah, doing a lie. violence all right? I mean, yeah, violence... I mean, that's, how, that's what we do, isn't it? Not violence. It if, is. I just want to make sure we, uh, we're going to get paid. Hey, hey. We're already getting paid for the information. There might be a reward for... Uh, bringing him alive... He can answer. Well, there might be some hush money out there waiting for us. 
<laughs> Ooh. All right, well, <laughs> could he tell that you had figured out where he was? Because if so, we might want to get going. Yeah, I don't think so, but uh, we never know. Yeah, let's get let's get going. Doc, are I'll you all right? Go. Yeah, you, let's go. You looked a little jittery for a little bit there. Your eyes were real big. <laughs> yeah, it was adrenaline. Any energy drinks. Just adrenaline. I'm fine. Right. <laughs> Just a drink. Alrighty, so how are you guys doing this? Are you guys going directly to Quadrant 1? Do you have another plan in mind? What is it you guys wish to do? Are there, like, cameras on board where we might be able to figure out uh, what this other living thing is and Ooh. whether it's friend or foe? Yeah, I think there definitely are cameras on board. I think you could definitely access that through back through the computer again. I believe would that you he feed it into my helmet. Oh, video array. That would be pretty slick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be like a movie or something. <laughs> I think you know because you're already past the main primary uh, pass wall. You could probably try to hack back into the bridge controls again to gain access to that. All right, <clears throat> let's see what we can do. And I'm going to hop right back in there. Okay. Now, you could try to do it quick like you were doing before. It'll be a difficulty of what it was before. Or you could try to take your time at it, and the difficulty goes down. It just takes a lot longer to do. How do you want to approach that? Uh, take my chances. I'm going to try to get up in there. Okay, cool. There's no such thing as, like, the help action in this system? Uh, yeah, there is. You can kind of aid and assist each other for sure. Um, the... Uh, Points on that. Hang on a second. Switch pages here. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm looking through my papers. It's on here. I gotta find it. Want? Uh, no, we'll just make it easy. I'll just say I can't find it right this second. I know there is one though. I think it's a plus one. It's probably a plus. Yeah, we'll give. I'll do this. Let's go ahead and let's have. Who's gonna assist? You're gonna assist him, Doc. Yeah. Okay, um, let's have you just go ahead and roll a um, just a intelligence or an education roll. Just straight, no uh, no skill involved. Uh, two d six. Yeah, two d six plus your education or intelligence. Great, uh, that is a twelve. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and give you a plus two on your roll, then Hito, because she is assisting you. All right. Yeah, the only thing a... I see is in combat. No, I don't see one out of combat, so we'll just do it like this. Is there a a, <laughs> a mechanic for for a crit fail? Did you roll two ones? Yeah. Oh snap! Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is there is uh, there is supposed to be. I don't actually know what it is though. Uh, that's a great question. Um, Why did I change dice? Why would I do that? Why would you do that to yourself, man? Why would I change dice right now? I know, of all the times. So we'll do this. Um, as you roll in there and you try to go ahead and do that, even with her, her bonusing. Uh, well, what's the what's the most? You have two ones, so that's two, plus two. your... Four, plus your, uh, seven. Seven plus her two is a nine? No, no, it's seven total. It'll be seven. seven total. Okay, so it still fails. Okay, so it still fails because you have twos. So as you try to hack back in to get access to the cameras, you find out that the computer terminal that you're trying to hack into completely shuts down. Son of a... <clears throat> and then you all hear in the room coming through some sort of PA system, that's not very nice to play with my toys. I'm going to hurt him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, right. I'm up to some serious shit with Butler. I can't be found out. All of you got to die. That's just the way it is. No witnesses, all right? So I let out those lycos to try to take care of you, but you all are a bunch of bugly little bitches, so that's fine. I got another friend for you walking around. you will never get past him. <laughs> the PA shuts off. Who does the space station or ship belong to? 
uh, to uh, Lysani Laboratories. If it blows up. <laughs> <laughs> Do we get in trouble? Will, will we still get paid from Dogly? I should have asked him that. Well, Dogly specifically asked you guys to bring information back about why they all went quiet. And as Anatoly pointed out, you technically have all you need. You don't actually need to deal with this this guy at all if you don't want to. Um, in terms of blowing it up, that might be a gray area, you know. So, blow up half of it. Where's Where's Bowie when you need him? <laughs> right. right. And, and just, I've been around the verse enough to know that if, if something goes wrong here and they have, like, we're on camera now and they want to cover up something, we'll be the ones that take the fall for it. I mean, can we get the footage first, then blow up the station and say it was like this when we got here? Well, (laughs) yeah, we'll need to get to another, uh, I don't know how we'd slow the station. That would be why, what I mean to say, I guess is we don't have that capability on our ship. Just black. Oh, we have uh, a ship. Sure. Uh, I, I stowed away a few explosives <laughs> here and there. In your belly pouch? Oh, wait, I, wrong game. I, I can rig this thing to blow, but uh, you know what? Let's just go get them. You <laughs> like your own camera? You're going to blame us anyway, so let's just go get them. Okay. On the way, I'm going to uh, hail our ship. Does it answer? Yeah. Uh, okay. Captain Erica, how's everything going over there? You've been radio silent. I've tried to contact you four times. Oh, sorry. Uh, there were these dogs that tried to eat us. Um, and then there was a montage that was really interesting to watch for a while. There's some really good music that happened music. during it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now, you know, we can... Uh, I just want to warn you that there's a, a psychopath on the loose over here. He's doing some weird, <laughs> sketchy shit. And he doesn't really have it out any longer. Because that ship that we ejected had a hole in it. So just make sure you might want to just disconnect and not let him aboard whatsoever. And once we take care of the situation, then you can come get us. You want me to disengage the Orpheus from that lab strip? That's what you're saying? Yes, if you would get the Orpheus off of... Orpheus. (laughs) Off of the station. (laughs) So he can't climb into your Orpheus. The, the orifice off the old beefiest. Alright, go ahead and make a persuasion roll for me with your social added onto it. Alright, so I have a plus two, and that's a three, and that's a two, so that's seven. I'm not leaving you guys behind. Oh, get no. your asses back there as soon as you can. I'm not what? disengaging anything until you get back on board. Okay, just don't let anyone else, if it's not us, on board. And hell no, I would never say leave us behind. The hell you are you what? thinking? What? <laughs> They're saying, why would I let anyone on board if it's not you? I just don't want anyone climbing into the orifice. That isn't us. Okay, no one's going to get on board the Orpheus before we're ready for you guys to come <laughs> right. back. Sorry, it. it's hard for my mouth to say that. You know what? Why don't we go ahead and just have radio silence to make sure we're not discovered by this mad No, man, I want to make okay? sure that you know that we're doing all right. Okay, so we'll just keep it over an open now, line. It turns off. Oh, oh. I was just going to leave an open line. <sighs> you got him mad again, didn't you? Yeah. Anyway, let's go get She gets guy. mad when I call it the Orpheus. I just... It's yeah, like that you, one word in your language I can't quite... Get. Yeah, oh, it's it's tough. All right, it's tough. Uh, shape of your snout. Yeah, right. <laughs> shape of your snout. <laughs> exactly. All right, well, how are you guys doing this? You guys are heading off towards the. Uh, now you have it, the location based on Hito's hacking skills, so you know exactly what section of Quadrant One you need to go to. Are you guys just marching on over there? Or are you guys trying to do something different? Uh, I don't want to uh, assume yeah, anything. Yeah, we're gonna just go. I'm just we're just gonna go there. I let him know that something else in here. He said there's he has a friend. I'm like, we're just going to go. Uh, damn it, the lights are off. I mean, we've got our lights, and I suggest doing a violence immediately upon seeing it. All right, cool. Let's go. <laughs> no stealth, no sneaking. All right. It's all good. And I heard yeah. the doctor say earlier, I aim to misbehave. Right? Yeah. yeah all right. Love it. Let's go. And I've got our, our six. Someone else wants to lead. 
Who's in front? Mm, I think I am still, maybe. Okay. Right, so Hito, you take a point. Do you want to boulder no, parchment no, shears no, for him? You know. Does Anatoly want to be a uh, 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 point man? I don't. I don't think. I got the armor on, so I take bullets a little better. I don't think there's bullets in here. <laughs> I don't what think if, it. What if he genetically altered whatever that is to shoot bullets out of its face or something? You don't know. That, that would be utterly insane. That's that right. would be. All right. All right, Anatoly, you're, you're I'm glad up. you're not our scientist. <laughs> yep, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, because if I was, I would totally make that. Girl, Are you from the Mirror Universe? All <laughs> right. <laughs> now, that one has a very long, yeah, dark yes. goatee. Yes. He always goes along with whatever Thurzang comes up with so that he oh. thinks all this shit is real. <laughs> nice. Nice. I love it. <laughs> Alrighty. So, okay. So, did we decide Hito or Anatoly who's in the front? Anatoly, Hito, and then I'm gonna use Hito for uh, for cover, cause not that much shorter than him, but I'm not as tall. So I'm gonna okay. use Anatoly for cover, and then the uh, doctor, and then uh, Thursang. Cool. Are and you guys moving stealthily or? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, with lights shining up. Yeah, that's us. that's true. Yeah. I assume yeah. that he can see us over cameras that he's in control of. So I don't know. That. I can switch to night vision, but yeah, but he's got lights on. So. I mean, I'll turn off my lights and switch to night vision. It's all good. I got the helmet on. We can do that. We're going dark. Let's go dark. <laughs> Hold on to each other's belts as you roll around through the hallway. <laughs> We're going dark. I, I, I've, yeah, I've got my flashlight out. It's on my <laughs> rifle. And, oh, look over there! Because right? Yeah, I don't have nifty helmets that let me do that. But uh, I am aiming it backwards because I'm walking backwards to shoot anything behind us. Oh. So I don't know if that'll corn, corn fuse anyone that's watching us on. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. All right, so you guys are all going to sneak around. Let's go ahead and have you guys all make stealth tests. Uh, you're going to go ahead and use your dexterity or your attribute with that. That is a nine. Nine? Ten. Ten? Uh, Come on, 11. Do your 11. Nice. Say five, Anatoly? Yeah. 14. 14, okay. And as you guys are all moving along, Anatoly in the front, as you move, you all are making really quiet movements through the dark, with most of you being in the dark, except for Thurzang with his light behind you all. And as you're all moving around, Anatoly, as you move through the hallway, suddenly your foot rubs against something, and you don't stumble as much as knock something over that your foot kicks over. And just out of reflex, Thursday, you whip your head around to see what's going on, and you see that there is a body stretched out across the hallway that seems to have the entire front of it is all marred and slashed up, very similar to the back of the guy you saw floating out in space. Uh, this person has clearly been clawed to death, and as you notice that, you look up and you see that there is, right at the end of the hall would be right where you're trying to go to get to where Slocum is. At the end of the hall, you see there is a creature that drops down from the ceiling, flips through the air and lands on the ground. It seems to be a primate of some sort, that dark fur that is black. It has silver along its back and it has, strangely enough, six arms so it looks almost like a cross between a uh, gorilla and a spider as it kind of scrambles and starts moving towards you guys as you whip your head back away the light goes away and the thing moves through the dark um i really think quick. you guys need to go ahead nope. and react really quick um yeah. when when uh anatoly bumped into that body and scraped whatever and made the noise i mm -hmm. darted really i darted to the left and kind of hid. <laughs> like oh, you did? Okay. Or something. Okay. Yeah. You uh, move in stealthily, and the person in front of me made a noise. I'm gonna. Dart <laughs> right. 
react and jump out of the way. Yeah, okay. Cool, cool, cool. So if something attacks him, then I'm not, you know, in the line, and I could uh, sneak attack. Oh, I'm just playing sneak to my attack. road. My my, yeah. my road. Yes. So I think in the dark, I think this thing is going to go ahead and get a reaction real quick to come out right at you, Anatoly, as the light from Thurzang's uh, helmet dashes away. Your screen is still up because you have night vision on, so you see this thing coming at you. Um, so it's going go to go to hit. It's going to get a 10, so it's an effect of 2. Damage for this thing's claw is 1d plus 2. Ooh, six plus two is eight plus the two for the effect. That is going to be ten. Uh, what is your um, armor? Seventeen. Your armor is seventeen in the gates. Yeah. Wow! And this it's, thing just—it's combat yeah. armor. Yeah, so, it's power combat armor. Yeah. Now, so, if he has armor piercing listed as as yeah. one of his traits. He does not. He does not. But that would be... He's just small. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so he just swing claws off the front of you, and everybody can then spring into action. Um, you guys want to roll initiative, or do you guys want to just narratively handle this? So, I realize that all he really needs is a hug. Uh, okay, no. <laughs> well, let's he can do, hug me. Right? <laughs> let's do initiative. I got to find All day long. <laughs> Struggle snuggle. All right. Rolling initiative, everybody. Okay. <laughs> so much for narrative. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Roll initiative. Let's get it go. It's on an eight. Up. All right. Uh, Anatoly, what do you have? Ten. Yeah, ten again. Okay. In Rahila? Eleven. 11, okay. Thursday, let's hear a 12. Let's hear a 12. Five, okay. And he does. It's just the 2d8 is not plus anything. Uh, 2d6 plus Two. your okay. dexterity or your intelligence or intellect. I've been rolling eight siders this whole time, right? Yeah, <laughs> whole time. Uh, nine. 20. <laughs> nine. Nine, okay. All righty. So, uh, Rahila, you're going to be up first. Cool. Um, Take some drugs. No. In the dark, it's yeah. going to be challenging for me. Yes. Um, is there a drug so your, I can your take? Pupils are as big as saucers, <laughs> right. right? Is there a drug I can take of my combat drugs that will let me see in the see dark? See in the dark. Ooh. Roll a. Um, let's have you roll a. Oh, geez. How do we do this? Go ahead and roll a medic and. Let's call it, let's call it, um, well, let's call it intellect. 13. 13. Yeah, you have something in there that you can, that you can take. Great. I'm going to do it. Okay. So you, uh, you pop this medicine and what it's going to do is it's going to, your pupils do in fact dilate super big. It's going to offer you the chance to see in the dark, but you will be, um, affected by super bright light because your pupils are so dilated. Mm -hmm. Um. Go ahead and roll 2d6 for me, please. Eight. Eight. And that will be in effect for uh, 80 minutes. Okay. Oh. Cool. cool. Um, <laughs> I'm going to run up with my mono blade and uh, <laughs> try, and, try and slice it. All right. Um, nine. I don't. I don't hit. It have an effect of one. Well, that's not great. Uh, seven damage. Okay, that's including the plus one. Yep. Okay. And so you are gonna surge forward. Your uh, mono blade slashes up again, and one of its six arms spirals off into the hallway. Uh, after her is gonna be Anatoly. Hey. Um, same thing as before, burst mode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. 13, so that's a bonus of, uh, what, 5 damage? Five. Of, um, 
plus 12 plus 3. So 8 and 12, 20 hit one each. Okay. And you, you fire across it, and as you do, it just, like the wolf did before, just kind of bounces and flails around. It flies back for you, slams back under the ground. It twitches once, and then goes still in the hallway. Here over the PA, God damn it! What the hell is wrong with you, PayPal? Is that all you've got? And, uh, yeah, you guys are alone in the hallway for a second. There is the door in front of you, the door that you know that leads to where Harris Slocum is. And you see that it seems to be locked. There is a uh, mechanism on the center of it that has a readout, a digital readout on the front of it. And the digital readout, it doesn't really have numbers or letters per se. Just uh, It's got just digital symbols, kind of like the Matrix, how it's just weird, random symbols moving around on it. Did that guy just ask us what's wrong with us for protecting ourselves <laughs> against the battle ape and psycho dogs that he created human sarcasm yes. oh <laughs> takes a while to learn gotcha yeah. <laughs> uh yeah so i'd try to get that door open okay access that panel all right yeah go ahead try to hack it um again this is going to be um with a, a bane but um I would say the type of material, this, the, the type of uh, uh, apparatus that this is, you're not going to be able to use your deciphering kit because this is more of like a physical manipulating something within it. So this will actually be a uh, mechanics role as opposed to an engineering role. Uh, or I'm sorry, electronics role. So you're going to do um, uh, mechanic with your intellect or your dexterity, whichever you'd like to do. All right. Okay, I could do this. I could get it done. You say with a bane, right? So that's a minus two. With a bane, so you're gonna roll three d. Take the lesser the lesser numbers of the two and add it to your ability and your skill to determine your your result. All sixes, baby. <laughs> Five. <laughs> and no dice. You're not able to get in through the door. <sighs> Anatoly, shoot it. <laughs> Can't get in. So I have this, like, engineering toolkit. Any electronics toolkit? Can I, like, use those to do yeah. stuff with? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what will happen is uh, in a situation much like the deciphering kit that he had for the computers, this will give you a boon to try to bypass things like this. Yeah, so I was thinking, like, is there, like, a cutting torch in the engineering toolkit that I can just cut the lock open with? So it's more of yeah, a physical yeah. thing than a computer thing. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Absolutely. Um, if you want to do that, roll a d6 for me. Two. I'll take about 20 minutes to cut through the door, but you could. Yeah. Is there another way out of this room? It doesn't seem to be from the... Um, overlay of the inside that you guys had seen earlier. It looks like it's just this one way in. It's a private quarter, so it doesn't really have any other, you know, other ways in or out. Hmm. Just keep an eye out, just in case he's not actually in here. And I'll cut, start cutting that open. Okay. The rest of you wait patiently and keeping an well, eye out. Oh. While he's cutting, uh, I want to look around using my jack of all trades skill Ooh. to see if there's something that I can uh, sort of makeshift, anticipating that we will probably be in light before my uh, uh, drugs wear off. Okay, so you're trying to uh, the jack of all trades basically kind of uh, lets you kind of fill in the blanks of all the other skills that you don't really have. So what specifically are you trying to do? You're trying to find I'm trying to like uh, find something that I can just jerry rig some sunglasses basically. I, I will say that without rolling, you will notice that I had taken out like welding goggles, which wait. I would happily let you use. Oh, oh great. yeah. So, so wait. And the, the jack of all trades. So when you're unskilled, you have a, bo a penalty of minus three for every point of jack of all trades you have, you reduce that penalty. Yeah, bypasses it. Yeah. Nice. Oh, okay. Never mind. So that I, I was like, so this whole time I could have, Used my uh, jack of all, but uh, all right. 
Oh no, no, no. It's not, it's not that it's not that powerful. It's just it just kind of offsets the fact that you don't really have certain trainings and things. So what it lets you do is kind of just you have a smattering of information about everything, kind of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jack of all trades, master of none, as it were. Um, yeah, yeah. So I was asking what specifically you were trying to do to try to figure out, you know, how exactly that rolling would go, what skill sure. you were trying to implement. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, you can give her your welding glasses. Yeah. There's saying, I know that you're uh, cutting something right now. I might need to use your glasses when you're done. I'll glad, like I'll drop them down and glance over you and shine my flashlight up at you because I can't see in the dark. <laughs> Be like, ah, oh yeah, yeah, she's, yeah, yeah she absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah she visibly down. recoils. Yeah, you could definitely tell that that something's going on with her eyeballs. Yeah. Her eyes have been shined, you know, right? at Butcher's Bay or whatever the heck. Yeah. So <laughs> while this is all going down. Anatoly and I are just looking down the hallways, just, you know, keeping eyes, both hallways, because yeah. you never okay. know when another monkey spider is going to show up. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's have the two of you go ahead and roll recon rolls, just to make sure everything is legit. And I'll use my jack of... No, I'm... <laughs> that's, in that's intellect, right? Uh, Yeah. I got an 11. Okay, cool. I, I also got an 11. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. The two of you keeping watchful eye, there is um, the occasional, like, you hear, like, maybe there's a fan or something turning on and off, but nothing seems to be coming up. And eventually you do get all the way through the door, Thursday. I will um, wait to open it until everyone's ready and hand my goggles over to the, to the doctor i kick that shit in <laughs> let's go <laughs> all right so the uh the blast doors slide open and as they slide open um there is a boom 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 sound as something shoots out of the room straight at you because you're right there in the front um so i'm gonna have to see if this hits you this guy was ready for you guys and you guys were taking some time oh okay it's gonna miss you um as these four things whip past Hito as he dodges out of the way, you stand see... Stand up there. Kick the door open, I stand up there, and they just zoom past me. Yeah. I stand there looking cool. So you I don't, think... like, Neo block them or something? <laughs> yeah. Don't move. Just... <laughs> he just looks... <laughs> just Bends backwards, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Or they just know pull, better pull than to time. hit him, and they go around. They, yeah. yeah, exactly. They, they like they want it. They wave around him. Uh, no, you guys see behind him on the wall. There was a boom, 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 boom as these bolts that were shot out of some sort Ooh. of bolt gun slam into the wall and get stuck. Um, you also would know this is not a weapon. This is literally like a, a repair tool, like yeah. like a nail gun, basically. Is what I got one of those. Um, so we can go ahead and keep the same initiative unless you guys want to change that because I know Thursings uh, was low. I mean, I guess that depends on when that fellow goes, because... So current initiative is going to be Rahila, Anatoly, Hito, and then him, and then you, Thursing. You you all do what you need to. I'm good with where I'm at. Okay, so Rahila, as the door is open, you have your goggles on, you look inside, you can see it as a room that, for intents and purposes, is uh, looks like inside of a living quarters, there's a bed off to one side, you can see that there was a desk that's been turned up on its side, and there is a figure who is just behind, um, he's like this with a nailer gun, and he sweeps deck back down in behind the desk as the door opens all the way, but you do recognize in that brief glimpse that it was the guy you guys are after, and you see that, uh, yeah, he's apparently set up a little layer in here he's trying to uh fight back against you guys so what do you wish to do did he it seemed like he was ducking down just for cover or does he need to reload this i i don't know if you got a good enough glimpse of that it, it looked like initially it just looks like yeah he's diving back in behind the desk for cover you can tell it's made out of metal his nail gun doesn't go reload <laughs> beep 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 <laughs> Reloading. A wizard needs health. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm going to take a gamble and try to lunge over the desk at him oh. and slice him with my mono blade. Oh, Hardcore, doctor. Is legit. Yeah. 
Dr. Death Doctor, over here. Yeah, Doctor <laughs> ain't messing around. Okay, cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, you you see Dr. Rahila just as soon as the, the nail gun's done getting shot, she just sprints through the room. Uh, let's go ahead. We're going to do this because you're doing two, like, major important things. I'm going to have you roll two different things with a minus two to each, uh, like a multi-action rule that we do in Traveler sometimes. So let's go ahead and first have you do a roll to dive over like you're doing. So let's have you go ahead and do a... Um, is there a... Athletics. Athletics. Uh, dexterity or athletic strength, whichever you want to do. And then you'll do the attack roll as well. So both of these rolls will be at a minus two. Okay, that's seven for dexterity. Jump and over that, the S. Well, yeah. it's, you know, it's your dexterity modifier. Yeah, your dexterity. Yeah, it's going to be so it's going to be your athletic skill and your dexterity. Yeah, that, yeah, so that's what I rolled. Seven. Okay. Yep. yep. And then the attack is going to be. Your melee blade, like you did before. Okay. Um, mm, 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 mm. Ten. Ten. Okay. So how this is going to look is as you move forward and you go and you you guys see her put a hand on the side of the desk. She goes to vault herself up over the desk, and as she does, there's something in the room that kind of snaps and pops behind her and it stumbles and throws you up over the desk and you manage to just tuck in enough so that you don't go face first into the floor on the other side but you do tumble over onto the other side and as you slam into the ground you inadvertently land on top of him as he's trying to cut and slash something open so what is the damage on your weapon because uh, the attack roll would have been successful, even with the minus two. Um, so what's the damage on the weapon? I'll say because okay. you're stumbling, it won't uh, get full damage, but it'll still do something. So um, I didn't mention this before, but for the monoblade, it also says that it's got an AP 10, so it ignores the first 10 points of armor protection. Mm. Oh, that's good. Uh, cool. 15. Surgeon of death over here. 15. Where'd my guy go? Here he is. Okay, okay, okay. 15, and it's going to bypass 10 armor? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so as you land, the monoblade jams right down into his shoulder blade. Ah, what the hell? He screams as he just screams out in pain. The monoblade, I mean, all the way up to the uh, to the back of your hand is buried into his shoulder. Uh, you got him good. You can see now that you're on top of him, he's wearing what looks like piecemeal pieces of armor, maybe even sections of the ship that are strapped to him. Uh, this guy's not wearing like actual armor. He's wearing some sort of cobbled together thing. So uh, yeah, that was uh, pretty red. <laughs> I'm just gonna yell in his face, surrender. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. All right, Anatoly, what are you doing? Uh, I am in amazement that our doctor just <laughs> led the charge over the know, desk right? and I hear surrender from behind the desk. Um, so I will approach uh, the desk with the gun pointed downward to see them two in, <laughs> you know, on top of her, on top of him. And yeah, um, yeah and just, I'll, I'll, I'll I'm not going to shoot him. Um, I'll say, uh, better listen to the doctor. Oh, yeah. The gun pointed at him. Okay. Hito, what are you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm going to just stroll over there. I'm going <laughs> to just punch him. Just punch him and just, uh, he, all right. Yeah, just, yeah. Punch him and say, you heard the doctor. <laughs> and just <laughs> grab him and kind of get him to his feet. <laughs> all right, go ahead and roll to punch him then. It's going to be melee unarmed. <laughs> And strength. Remember, if you guys are untrained and stuff, that you got a minus three. Uh, well, I don't. Mm. But your jack of all trades does offset that. You said you have jack of all trades. Yeah, jack of all trades, but I don't have. The only thing I have in melee is blades, and I have a blank melee, so that's minus what two. Yeah, there's melee, melee unarmed. Yeah, so it'd be a minus three because you're not trained in it. All right, so that's uh. Oh, what's your? You, did you say you have jack of all trades? Yes, I do. And what is that rating at? One. Okay, so then your minus three becomes a minus two. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you're gonna add your uh, strength because okay. you punch him in the face. All right, so that's a ten. Ten total. 
Oh, yeah. nice. Okay. Yeah, so you still get over there. Yeah. Stab yeah. Him instead, I just want to stab him. I don't actually know. I don't want to kill him, so I'm going to just punch him. I'm going to keep the 10 and punch okay. him. Yes, yeah, so you go over. Yeah, and Anatoly, listen to the doctor. And then you go over. He looks up at you, and you just, yeah, right between the eyes, just wham. You break his nose. Blood sprays out. Ugh! And uh, you can Nerd. see. You can. Guys are all up close on this. His eyes are wild, too. You can see there's some veins kind of all struggled out on his face. Um, he is going to go, not today! And he's going to go, and kind of push back against all of you guys. I'm going to roll, roll something real quick here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and he's going to throw you all back off of him with his super strength that he's been infused with because he took some crazy drugs too and you guys all three go flying back you go back about 10 feet which means that um, specifically where you're at Hito you're going to slam up against the bulkhead of the wall behind not taking any damage or anything just the three of you are kind of pushed away from him and he stands up and he flexes and some of the veins stretch out on his face some more and um you see that he actually uh, grabs up off of the ground, not the nail gun, but some sort of what looks like a piece of a table, like a metal table leg that has serrated metal wrapped around the top of it. And he just kind of, like he's, he's getting ready to swing it at you guys. So, uh, Terzang. Yeah, uh, you know, Terzang was completely ready just to let them, you know, take this guy yeah, in and all that. But instead, he calmly from the door shoulders his rifle you know puts it up there takes aim shoots this guy in the face <laughs> shoots this guy right in the back right <laughs> i love it okay. uh, all right cool five and five is ten plus two twelve yeah okay that's gonna be up by four so okay definitely should have stabbed him ten and, uh fifteen <laughs> 15 damage, okay, in his... Uh, now, that's not armor-piercing, correct? Just double-checking. No. So that 15 is going to go down to a 11. Okay. Um, yeah, so you so, shoot him. Boom! It kind of shoots him in the back. Oh, sorry, what? Uh, so out of curiosity, are there called shots? There are... Uh, what's that do? I just, I just had One that thing I me. miss about, like, 3rd edition D&D are called shots. Shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, shoot, I just had that in front of no me. ODM misses those. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> totally fair. Totally fair. Exactly. Oh, I just, I just had it. Where did it go? Uh, da, da, maybe you can't. I don't know. No, you can. Uh, it was in. And why are you gonna do that? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Fine. Um. Cover, call shots. Fixed in post. Right. Close combat. Uh, so I don't it's, know. Uh, it's on here, though. I, I don't uh, know where it went. It's subject to a DM minus two. Where are you seeing that at? I looked it up on the internet. Nice. Thank you, uh, internet. If it's a more rapid fire, it's DM minus six. Okay, so yeah, so you just take a minus two, and we'll say it does extra damage if you hit. I mean, is that kind of going to be a fair assessment without having to spend, or does it say what it does? Uh, the main benefits of shooting at specific locations are the, to bypass cover or armor. So essentially, I'm I'm aiming for like his aiming head, his head. If, if he wasn't, if he, like unless he was wearing like a trash can or something on his head. I uh, no, he's got he's got a he's got his yeah. bald head sticking out. Okay, so uh, minus two to the roll would have been still enough to hit. Yeah. So the damage for a headshot would have been, uh, does it say what it is for each individual area? It does not. Okay. Um, oh, I'll say uh, it's... Uh, sorry, it says a wound specific location has the effects noted under wound effects, which it does not list. So let's just skip that so we don't have to look something else up. But it would lower the damage because I didn't, well, well, because I didn't have the... the uh, when I had the the original roll of twelve, it gave me plus four, right? Because it was four over, right? So then it would only be plus two because I would have gone down to ten. So it would have been mm -hmm. uh, ten, fifteen. Okay, I got you. Uh, so yeah. So you want to so do what? Just the regular 13? attack? So it would have been thirteen damage. Okay. Okay. To the yeah. 
to the unarmored head face thing. Yes. All right. So you shoot him in the head, and it's going to hit him on the side of the head right by where that messed up ear is. And there's going to be a section of his head that kind of blasts off. And, uh, and he kind of stumbles and drops to one knee, not completely out of it. But he looks up at the three of you who are crowded around him, and this guy looks messed up. But, uh, Rahila, it's your turn. I'm going to come at him again with my monoblade. Yeah. So, Jeremy, thanks for finding the one rule I didn't really... Yeah, Prepare absolutely. For today, for today's session. <laughs> well, you know me. Nine. Oh, I'm sorry, Nine. what was it? Nine? Okay, yeah, that'll hit him. Up by one. Uh, rolled uh, three sixes. <gasps> nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so that's going to be three plus. So that's going to be three sixes, 18 plus one is 19. So, Deb. In the words of everyone's favorite DM across America, how do you want to do this? What's this look like? How do you take this guy out? Um, I don't want to kill him. <laughs> so if it's possible to do all this and not kill him, like I am a, a doctor, so I know the places to cut him that are like going to make him pass out from blood loss and then I can stabilize him right away, but keep him unconscious. Like, is that... Okay, I thought you were gonna say you gave him a lob lob uh, lobotomy, so that's I that's mean, fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do um. We'll say that. Yeah. You uh. You cut something in. Uh. We'll say in the the back of his neck, and yeah, he he bleeds out uh, enough to get pass out from the impact, and yeah, he drops to the ground, and you guys are all able to capture Harris Slocum, who was uh yeah working with this rival company to try to get trade secrets over to them. Uh, you've taken him out, and uh. You all are able to return. Uh, you guys take him back to the ship, unconscious. I assume you maybe bound, bound, uh, bind him or something. And okay, yeah, and put him in you know, low Earth break. stasis. Yeah, eventually, yeah. unless you want to question him or anything. I don't want him getting all bane on us again. Right, right, right. We're wasting yeah. our food. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's not getting any borscht. Right. Yeah. Screw that guy. Exactly. Can so, I have yeah, his portion? I think Erica's been sitting up here on the bridge. Yeah, <laughs> right. Leftovers the whole time. Yes. Hurry up, yes. guys. Forced yeah. is getting cold. Right? I'm not going to leave you behind. Um, nom, nom, nom. <laughs> yeah, right. I will eat all of your borscht. Um, so, yeah, so you guys are able to uh, secure this. You guys return back to the station. You give your patron the information necessary so that he is able to make sure that the uh, backwater deals that he has going on with Lysani Laboratories are able to continue. He pays you guys as promised, so the four of you split the 20,000 chids that he promised you all. Oh, but there was a bit of the understanding. You thought you all were getting 20,000 each. So, no, it is all with the four of you. Uh -huh. And, uh, yes, you guys are able to secure. But you guys know that there are other jobs. You guys take another cargo and you head back out into really the, uh, really. the ship. Oh, you have something? Yeah, really quick. So, af yeah. so after we, we, we secured him, can I go in again without him counter hacking me and try to <laughs> get a bit more information and download a, 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 some more stuff on, a, on another oh, drive? For future blackmailing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think um, yeah, I think as you're able to take the time with that, yeah, you have carte blanche. You find out all the information that you need to find out, and yeah, you get a full rundown dossier about how basically yeah they've been testing making these combat drugs that we were talking about. They've been testing on animals. Some of the animals got loose. You find a section of the information of the cameras and stuff that looks like about eight days ago the cameras were temporarily turned off for ten minutes, and then about an hour after the ten minutes there was an explosion, and a lot of the scientists were killed and several other scientists were seemingly murdered by the animals and by someone who was on board someone among us they might say who actually came around and uh took care of everybody else you found all the information about the dealings that slocum was doing and yeah you have all this beautiful blackmailing stuff that you can use for sure so uh, i duplicate i duplicate that okay uh, Duplicate, uh, yeah, duplicate everything. I uh, isolate the thing, the information uh, on like the drugs and stuff, uh -huh. like formulas, 
duplicate that, sell some of that on the black market, use uh, <laughs> the information on for that I got and like uh, the <clears throat> camera stuff to see if I can leverage that with Dog Lee to try to get a bonus and go through with all of that. Okay. It's also, anon- anonymously, by the way. Also, yeah. equally as important, I do by myself and the good doctor some of those nano dyes oh, but like the upgrade ones that like we can turn on to strobe or slowly oh, yeah. shift colors Man, and they yes. like they actually you don't have to like redye them all the time they move down your hair as it grows yes absolutely absolutely <laughs> absolutely Sid do me a favor real quick go ahead and make a uh, we're gonna call this social and uh what skill do you think you want to use streetwise to fence all this stuff on the yeah uh, i think i'd use streetwise all right go ahead and roll it and it's true then that's intellect or does that just intellect as well or just straight streetwise streetwise and social oh well, no. streetwise. you can use your intellect if you if you think yeah, yeah. Oh, because right. believe it or not folks this adventure we're playing through does actually have rules for if you try to blackmail your patron so here we are right now going to find this out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, nine. <laughs> nine, okay, yeah. So uh, what you're able to do is by blackmailing Dog Lee Hosh, you're able <laughs> to get, you personally are able to get 40,000 chits on top of what he paid the rest of the group because you blackmail him for double what he offered to pay you. Yeah. Um, and yes, you know what? If that doesn't give you warm feelings, I don't know what will. So this was Traveler, uh, a little bit of a, um, a uh, an intense session, a little bit different. Sometimes, uh, you know, Traveler could be all kinds of different things. So today I was happy to explore the crazy gonzo combat that you guys all decided to do. Awesome. Players, you've been amazing. Um, before we say thanks to everybody and give everybody an idea of who we are before we sign out, I want to make sure we say thank you to Hero Forge, who we use to create all the really cool custom figures and tokens, and uh, I believe the baddie picture was up there too. Uh, all kinds of cool stuff that was up there. Um, and also Epidemic Sound, who was providing all of the music the entire time we were playing. Uh, we do, we use them pretty much for everything. They're awesome. Uh, so thank you to them. Of course, thank you to Mongoose Publishing for making the game. And Seth Skorkowski, you're awesome. Thanks for writing this adventure which i probably butchered by cutting out so much for time but it was awesome too hey i tell you what buddy if you ever see this and you want to be on the channel come hang out man because you're awesome i'm not lying you, um, you did to yeah. this script what our good doctor did to that poor guy i i did i hacked it right to, <laughs> to shit and got it right to the base of it so or i lobotomized it i don't know is that what you're saying <laughs> no sorry Seth Skorkowski. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Seth has Seth Scorkowski is a great uh, writer, game designer guy. He has a whole channel where he talks about stuff, including Traveler. So go check that out. Um, but yes, uh, I was Kevin, your humble host and game master today, referee, as it's called in Traveler. Let's go around and let everybody say goodbye to you, remind you where you can find them. Because, of course, if this was your first time watching. You fell in love with these four players and you want to see what else they do. So let's start with our actual resident ringer nathan hey man we played traveler back in the day since it first back came out. in the day second traveler rpg guy. i ever played Heck um yeah. so yeah i can be found on instagram where i occasionally post gaming kind of stuff uh dj underscore dungeon master thanks for inviting me kevin had a great time thank you man appreciate it guy showed me how to play traveler for the first time uh glad to have have you here man and uh hopefully we'll do more if you'd like your your time here today thank you nate appreciate it buddy let's head on over to sid who again i don't know how the screen is laid out i'm not watching uh twitch right now so sid yeah uh, remind everybody who you are thanks for playing today buddy it's always a pleasure two days in a row was awesome so hey let's make it three uh, <laughs> why not <laughs> why not i'm sid uh you can find me on the socials at underscore sundance sid uh um Honestly, I'm uh, at this point. I am a resident. Uh, <laughs> we get to play. <laughs> yeah, regular. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was I just enjoy uh, playing new systems, finding new systems, learning new systems, trying new things. So that's why I always volunteer. But um, yeah, you can catch me here whenever we get to plays coming around. Uh, and other places, there are things in the work that are we trying to get a. Uh, Get on the schedule and that'll be out sometime 
shortly soon so follow me on social media pay attention and keep up with uh what i'm doing absolutely yeah thank you so much Sid. appreciate it buddy moving on over to deb Thev. awesome uh not at all what i was expecting our doctor to do today was be epically amazing which doesn't surprise me for deb so thank you for doing that <laughs> so remind everybody where they can find you what you're up to Thanks for the invite, Kev. This was so fun. I am on Instagram at dsweats. Um, I'm also here on Wednesdays at the Wanderer's Haven playing in the uh, new Eastera arc that started last week. Uh, super fun. Check it out. Um, and then in a couple weeks, the next arc of Lanat Eterna starts with Kev. So Ooh. that's going to be really exciting as well. So I will be around. Yes, you will. Awesome. Thank you so much, Deb. I appreciate Thanks, it. Kev. I appreciate you. And of course, Jeremy, the man, the myth, the legend. Remind us who you are, you are today. Uh, I'm sure you've got a dog go laying around your feet somewhere who inspired your playing today. I usually oh, wow, do. She's, she's, she's I think she's, she's around the corner over there. I kept her okay. hearing her doing something, and I'm like, I don't know where she oh. is. I'm Jeremy. You can find me here on the channel uh, or on social medias at WH Pubs or head over to whpublications.com. I publish things. I am in school. So really, I'm publishing things very, very slowly. Um, what, else, what was I going to say? Oh, right. Yeah. So the Wednesday game, I'm not in this one, but make sure you check out Chad's Rising. Oh, wait. Chaos Rising. Rising. Chaos Rising. Oh, man. You're welcome, Miko. And I just want to say thank you to everyone for playing today. It was so much fun. I appreciate it. And thanks for letting me be my weird uh, wolf self today. Loved it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Um, yeah, like I said, I am the uh, I was the host today, Kevin. You can find me online at the socials at Kev Ran Games. I am one of the production team members here, me and Jeremy and Beth and Miko, who are, uh, you could find uh, both of them in the Wednesday game. Miko running and Beth playing, because Beth's playing that, right? Did I just misspeak? Oh, she is playing that. Okay, I thought so. And uh, But yeah, um, when I'm not here running, we get to play in other games, uh, including next week, next Sunday, we have a special solo saga where I will be playing The Librarian's Apprentice, finally. It was supposed to be a couple weeks ago and computers are computers but uh that's a really cool game and uh i'll be it's a solo play where i'll be playing a uh a, a character an elf uh not an elf what are they called uh deer folk deerkin whatever whatever he is he's a deer guy who is in a library trying to discover some lost secrets I and mean, you and, play whoever uh, you want to that's it. Uh, that's next next Sunday, the same two two o'clock time. And also on Fridays, you could find me as the U.S. ambassador of Lanata Turna, as Deb mentioned. We have a new art coming up for that soon. That is a grimdark fifth edition setting of high epic fantasy that's coming over from Italy, and it rocks. So uh, come check it out. Very different tone than this. So uh, thank you all so very much for watching. We appreciate you so much. Um, as always, until we see you next time, please take care of yourselves and have fun. So thanks everybody for joining us for We Get to Play. Have a great thanks, day. Thanks, Kevin. Thank Bye. you.